house this whole time, and she just died. She just she passed. No, 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 no! Just be in the backyard the whole time. No! In this video, a woman who is suspected of killing her mother and burying her in the backyard is questioned by several detectives. On September 19, 2015, Judy Schultz received a concerning phone call from her mother. In tears, Ora Lee Hawkins told her daughter that she was moving to Colorado to stay with a woman she had met at church. Almost instantly, this set off alarm bells for Schultz. She had seen her mother earlier that day, and there was no mention of such a trip. Furthermore, her mother confided that she was having trouble with Schultz's sister, Amy Day. Day lived with her mother and had a history of substance abuse and erratic behavior. Hawkins suspected that Day was stealing from her as well as mismanaging finances. Schultz was concerned, and when she didn't hear back from Hawkins, she reported her missing the next day. Two days later, Oralee Hawkins was found buried in her own backyard, wrapped in a blanket, bags, and cables. Fresh dirt had been placed over the body and as if in mockery of a cemetery plot, fake flowers had been planted. Hey, it's almost done. I thought he, he forgot to do one more, one more thing. I think do one more thing, but since we're waiting, I just wanna go over a couple more things that we talked about yesterday. Remember yesterday, you know, it took a lot about the, about that stuff, okay? So, before we get started, we're gonna record this, okay? So, uh, today's day is September 21st, 2015, time is 3.23 p.m. We'll get out of the Sheriff's Office, Osceola County. Detective Joel Guevara, Detective Brett Roller, and can you please state your full name, Amy, please? Amy Grace Day. Okay. Um, again, thank you so much for, for waiting for us for the, for the phone thing. Um, we're, uh, as you can see, we're conducting a full, full blown investigation because we don't know what happened. So we just want to cover every angle and make sure that we got all the steps covered, okay? And um, and and due to that, I just gonna read some stuff to you, some formalities, okay? Just again, just it's a full blown investigation, so um, I just want to get this out of the way, okay? Um, you have the right to remain silent. You understand that? Yes. Okay. If you need to speak up since you're recording, okay? Yes. Anything you say may be used against you in court law, you understand? Yes. Okay. And so you're entitled to talk to a lawyer before and during questioning. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one will be provided before and during questioning without charge. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Amy, will you be so kind? This is the, the part that I read to you. Print your name here. Or should I just redo it? What do you put? I see. I'm not used to writing grace, so. Okay, that's fine. Okay, here's um, initial here. These are the stuff that I read to you. You said that you understood. And then I need for you to sign down here saying that you understand. Now we're going to sign this here, myself. Then since this is the only part that we are that we are using, I'm going to cross out the rest of it. Okay. All right. I just want to go over real quick just the highlights of your routine on, on the weekend. Um, you, you you stated. Let's start with Friday. Let's go back one day. I know we started on um, the other days on Saturday, start back on Friday. Friday was your routine that day? Um, I was packing, I was um, getting clothes ready for Goodwill. Mom and I both were. Um, okay. We were. Um, 
I'm just laughing and joking mm -hmm. and um, pack the pantry with stuff that I eat that she doesn't because she's a vegetarian. Um, going over just, you know, different things. I mean, it was just a, a normal day. Just a normal day? Yeah. Does your mom have like a regular routine? Like she does the same thing every day or no. like the same routine or just... No. No? No. Different things, different days. I mean, you know, she goes to Walmart different days. She goes to Wendy's different days. She goes... The only thing that's routine is um, in the morning time, she walks every morning um, on the back porch, um, takes her grandson to school, uh, will take lunch to him at lunchtime, um, and then sometimes she'll go down there and then but morning, the, the morning walk, taking him to school, and sometimes going and taking him lunch, I mean, taking lunch out to him. That's pretty much the routine. Day's body language is tight and withdrawn. Her folded arms and crossed legs indicate that she's hiding something. She relaxes slightly when asked about her mother's daily routine, feeling safe because it does not directly relate to her part in her mother's death. Distraught, Parker Bell fired a 40 caliber pistol into the floor, sending the room, which included several civilians, into a panic as people duck for cover. Now, um, normally she will, um, but it's different days, but after she could goes, takes Morgan drives to school and on her way back, she may stop at Walmart, but I mean, she tells me, but it's on different days. Gotcha. So, you know. Sorry about that. And then, okay, and then Friday, it, was that the day that you already have plans to go out of town with, with, your, boy, with your boyfriend? Um, or when, when, when did that those plans came up? That didn't come up until Saturday. Saturday? Yeah. Okay. And who reached out to you? Did Kerry reach out to you or you reach out to Kerry? He those called plans? me. I missed his call. I called back. He um, he, didn't miss, he missed my call. Um, called back and then I called him back. I mean, we just went back and forth. Now, around what time those, those calls started? Um, I think the first one was like at 7.50, 8 o'clock in the morning because he gets up early. Okay. And then that's the reason I missed his call because I didn't hear my phone ring. Um, when I called back, I don't know what he was doing, but he didn't answer the phone. Then when he called me back, um, we talked for a little bit and then I called him back. And that's when, um, after that we were like, well, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing? And we wanted to, we kind of decided what we were trying to see if we had anything, if anything was going on. I asked mom if she had anything going on, if she needed me for anything. And she said, no, she was going to be going to church, you know. And I said, okay, I called back and I said, no, I don't have anything. And he goes, okay, I'll come get you. I said, okay. And then um, on Saturday, your mom went out the whole day? No. Did she step out of the house? No, she cleaned on Saturday. Okay. So she never got in the car, left, or anything like that, went outside? Or well, she went, went outside out, to... She went outside when Morgan and Mark came down to mow the grass. Oh, okay. All right. But, I mean, other than that, she was inside cleaning. And she went outside, out back, you know, for a little bit and read the Bible. She does that. Um, the only other, the other routine she has is every day between 1.30 and 2.00. During the week, she does talk to her sister Joy, and then my sister calls her on her way home between four and five, whichever whatever time my sister gets off work, until my sister gets home. That is during the week. Those are two things that my mother does. That goes part of her routine. But um, on Saturday, I'm I didn't go outside, but I know Mark was there only because he's the one who runs big uh, zero turn. Um, I'm Morgan. I'm sure was there. Um, she went out, they mowed and left, she came in, she continued cleaning. You went out, other than leaving with Carrie, you went out the when day, that you stepped out of the house like, to go somewhere, run some errands, anything like that? No, when I stepped out, it was at 5 o'clock on Saturday. And that was to, that's you when you left Carrie, yeah. Carrie? Yeah, the only other time I was outside was when I, I go out back to smoke, because my mother's allergic to smoke. But I always go out back. And when Kerry got to the house, did he want to sell the house or no. did he remain 
outside. Yeah, he just stayed outside. I, I went outside and got in his car, but that's not unusual. No, oh, okay. All right. Just like when he dropped me off, I got out of the car and, you know, went inside, and, or went through the gate and went through the back door, but that's not unusual either, so. How long does it take to get up there by the Gainesville area where he lives? I forgot the name. Ch Chiflin or? Chiflin. Um, without traffic, two hours. Two hours? Yeah. With traffic, two hours, 15 minutes, two hours, 30 minutes. Depending. Uh, and that's how I take the turn by 75? 75 to alternate 27. And that's the route that you guys took, right? Mm -hmm. So the route we always And the same route you guys took back mm -hmm. on Sunday? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. On Sunday, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm losing track of days. Okay, it's okay. So, um, let's go back to Saturday evening, or Saturday night. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you heard from your mom? Um, between 8.20, 8.25. That's when you received that phone call, which mm -hmm. was a little bit, um, you said she was crying. She wasn't bawling, she was just kind of a... It, more of a, it was like a whimper, you know, type, you know, and, you know, she told me, when she told me she loved me, um, and that she would call me as soon as she got a chance. I... As with many killers, Day tries to imply that the victim was suffering from mental troubles to explain her disappearance. She describes the tearful phone call, not realizing that in doing so, she is strengthening the case for premeditation. She took it as you know, she was going to miss me or, you know, I mean, I didn't read too much into it. I may mean, should have, but I didn't. You know, my mind was probably five, you know, somewhere else, but I, just, I, I didn't read much into it. My mom, when she says she loves you, you know, sometimes she cries. When she leaves to go to North Carolina, before she leaves, she tells you she loves you, she'll cry. So, I mean, I didn't really read that much into it. During that phone call, did she give you a timeline when she was supposed to be back or how long she was going to be gone? She didn't really give me a timeline. Um, my understanding is she gave my sister a timeline. And then after you finished the phone call with your mom, did you and your sister talk? Did yeah, my sister called me. Apparently after she went down to mom's house, banged on the door, she didn't answer. Judy called me asked me if I had heard from mom. I told her yes. She asked me what she said and I told her. And Judy told me she told her the same thing and that, but that she had said she was gonna be gone for six months and that there was no way that mom would miss Christmas with her grandson. And I said, if you, you know, hear anything, call me. And I started sending my sister texts, you know, if you hear something, call me, you know, anything happens. And all she would respond with was with the letter K. You know, I told her, you know. That was Judy, right? Yeah. Judy. I sent her a text saying, you know, I'll be back on Sunday. And she responded with, okay. Or she responded with, okay. But, I, you know, I was sending texts. I think the last text I sent her may have been after 10 o'clock. So how far, like how many minutes, just approximately, that's not to be exactly. And it's kind of hard to go back and quote. Except, I mean, how, how, like how many Between minutes the, after the phone call, you had with mom, your mom and ended, and then when you received a phone call from Judy? 15, 20 minutes, maybe. Okay. And how many phone calls? How many times you actually, you guys had a actually conversation on the phone? Me After. and Judy? Yeah. Um, that night? That night? Yeah. One. And then the rest of the communication was text. via text? Mm -hmm. Okay. From your phone, between your phone and her phone? Mm -hmm. Okay. And your phone, you're the only person that uses that phone, right? Nobody else uses that phone. Not that, I mean, I have to let other people use it, but majority of the time I'm the only one that uses it. Okay. I mean, you know, my mom's used it. Okay. When was the last text that you sent to Judy and you received from Judy on Saturday, Saturday night? I want to say, the, I, I don't remember exactly, but I want to say it was probably at 10, okay. maybe a little after. And the last text you received from Judy was like, okay, or what was what, what, that? The letter K. The letter K. That's all I ever got back from her was K. Okay. Let's move forward to um, Sunday. Um, did you hear from Judy or did you contact Judy or? I contacted Judy, told her I was on the way back. Or what time was that? Um, I 
nine. I get, I, I believe about nine. She told me to call her and let her know when I was um, fifteen minutes out. Okay. I said okay. Um, I got there uh, and I called her and. Around what time? Around what time was that that you got to? Eleven. And that's what the house, right? You said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I wonder what time you guys left. Um, Chief 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 Land? Yeah, about or, nine. What, nine? Yeah, maybe a little before. Okay. Did you guys stop anywhere else? No. And you came back with Carrie, right? Mm -hmm. And his car and his black Mustang? Mm -hmm. Okay. And when I got to the house, um, I knew I had to meet Tasha, so I just ran met her. On my way back, I called Judy, let her know that I was, you know, a few minutes out, got there, and then open the door and Judy was in the driveway. Okay. And she came in the house. And you were driving? Mom's car. Okay. What kind of car is that again? It's a silver Toyota Corolla. Okay. So you met uh, your friend Tasha. Mm -hmm. I know we talked about this one time about some cigarettes, right? Mm -hmm. You were swapping out some cigarettes? Yeah, she gave me a mental mistake. Okay. So. And you said, where was it? Where you that guys was at Westgate. Okay. And it took me maybe 10 minutes to get back to the house. Okay. So from the time you left to go meet Tasha, mm -hmm. You met Tasha and you came back, it's about 10 minutes, you said? Well, I, I left about 11, got there, met her, and maybe I got to the house, maybe it was at 11, 15. Um. As she describes the timeline of events, Day is far too calm and unconcerned for someone who has just lost their mother. Even people who are uncomfortable showing vulnerable emotions in front of others will show signs that they are repressing their feelings, but Day almost acts as if she is bored. Love and dirty. I don't remember exactly what time because I didn't look at a watch, but between 11 to 10 and 30. And I called Judy. Okay. And then when I opened the door, she was there and she came in. Right. You stop anywhere else? No. You want to stay home? Okay. So when you got to the house, your sister Judy was in the driveway? No, she got there right after I did. Okay. But it only takes her two, three minutes to get from her house down to the house. Okay. So it's about the same same area where your dad lives, right? Right next door. Okay. All right. That is very close. Um, so you get to the house, Judy gets to the house, good call. And we went in, we looked around. Um, nothing seemed out of place other than the fact that mom's stuff, clothes, yeah, you know, that, that type of stuff was gone. But I mean, kitchen, living room, um, her desk, the TV room, the, you know, where the computer's at, everything was, the back porch, everything was normal. I mean, there was nothing out of place. There was no book out of place. There was nothing in her room that seemed out of place except for her stuff on. Gotcha. Any, anything else? In the rest of the house, like any on your room or the other, the that back room that's across from your room, that's what I like the. Like that's the my room. mom's TV room. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anything out of the out ordinary in no. those rooms? No, everything seemed normal. Except for, I mean, her jackets were gone, but other than that, there wasn't anything out of the closet. It was missing. I mean, there's a huge coin collection in there that was still there, but that's Morgan's, and but I mean that was there. But other than her jackets, that was it. Um, nothing in my room looked deserved. I mean, there was nothing missing. And of course, I mean, I'm, you know, I've got that huge TV sitting in there and all that other stuff, but none of that was missing. Gotcha. And when you got there, when and then arrived, and Judy got there with you, the house was completely locked up, right? There's secure, nothing tampered with no windows, no damage to anything. Everything was normal. Yeah. You guys got an alarm at the house or no? An alarm? No. no. There's a thing there, but it's not connected. It's not connected. No. Okay. She had it turned off, I don't know how many, over 10 years ago. But no. Um, she keeps that sign there because it deters people. But um, no, there was, the house was, the, the screen door that's on the front door, mm -hmm. the only way to, um, it, it, it only locks from the inside. Mm -hmm. So it was locked. So I had to go to the gate and do the back door. But 
that is not unusual. I mean, the only other, the only time that's unlocked is if, you know, I, I mom is leaving and she unlocks it for me, knowing that, you know, which, now that I think about it, going to church, she would have, un she should have unlocked it, because knowing that I was coming back. Because um, she was going to stop at Hungry Howie's for us after, after church, because we always get something after church for lunch, whether it be Subway, Hungry Howie's, or, you know, whatever. Um, but it was locked, so that's the reason I went around to the back. But the back door was locked. The door that leads from the house into the garage was locked. The door that leads from the, it's that white door that goes from the garage out to the back where the recycling bin, mm -hmm. it was locked. The garage door was shut. You know, the front door was locked. Everything was locked. And all the windows were shut. I mean, I didn't check if they were locked, but they were all shut. So while you guys were over there, you guys are noticing the, that there's just a couple of your mom's stuff. Your mom's stuff are missing. And they're not there. That's the only thing out of, out of place. Yeah. What kind of conversation you and Judy, Judy were having? Who was it? You guys both decided to contact the sheriff's office and and report this, or who who made my, who made that decision? Me and Judy were talking about it. My aunt Joy and uh, we all agreed that it was odd, and you know it was. We started going through her address book, trying to find, you know, trying to contact people, trying to find this Rose, trying to find anybody who knew Rose. Um, I remembered the church book from with the pictures and phone numbers and stuff like that. I went and grabbed it and to see if we could find her, and um, that's how we got. We had Ruth's home phone number, but that's how we got the pastor's number and the treasurer's number. And Judy knew some people she went to school with. And so she took it to make phone calls. Um, Joy said that we needed to contact the sheriff's department. We kind of agreed on that. And Judy told me that she was going to make some phone calls. And she the clothes and other belongings are in the attic where Day placed them. It was a poor choice because in such cases as these, police do a thorough search of the home. As for Rose, no one at the church had ever seen such a woman. Again. This was a foolish lie. Church members would know one another or recall if a stranger had been attending recently. And let me know. And then the next thing I know, she's in the house with deputy. Did she do that? Did, that, did she, she do that at the house, or she left back to her own? She left and went back to her own house. I was. I asked her to stay until Joy called because I wanted to hear, you know, my, with my the three way, so that way the three of us could discuss it. But. She said that she was on her way back from Pigeon Forge and she hadn't called and so, and I was like, well, I have Doyle's phone number, his cell phone number. Mm -hmm. And she goes, no, we'll just wait till she gets back to the house. And, but I mean, I was, I was wanting to hear what, you know, the three of us have a conversation. Gotcha. Just to make a, that way, you know, every, a family, everybody, everybody yeah, can make that decision. A gotcha. family decision. Yeah. Um, but she left and she said she wanted to make some phone calls and I said, okay, I said, let me know. and. The, she, I mean, she didn't call me. Next thing I knew, she was there at the house with the deputy. She never called me. She said she was coming. She never said she called y'all guys. Nothing. She just showed up. Um, I just want to just put pause there for a minute. I want to go back to, to the night before. When you received the phone call from mm -hmm. your mother saying that she's going to go with Rose, mm -hmm. did she discuss with you how the, she was going to go in a car? By train, by plane, she said by Rose, bus, and She like said that. Rose was coming to pick her up. Gotcha. That was it. Do you know? Um, do you guys check? Um, do you guys? Do you got? Do you have access to her bank account that you're able to confirm she she bought a ticket or somewhere or anything like that? I have access to her bank account. Oh yeah. Yeah. Where she banks at? Uh, she banks at Central Florida Educators. She has access to my bank. I have access to her bank side. Okay. Um, I, I know we discussed um, yesterday or this morning. Uh, about your job opportunity up in um, Ohio, that's a paralegal. Um, and I know you mentioned something that the, the gentleman that you're going to be working for, he'll be trying you out from here. So you'll be like working for him from here, or what? How, how do you get your income? How, you know, you have to pay whatever part you rent out? What kind of work do you do? Whenever there's somebody that needs, that's here, he'll call me. So it's right now, it's an agony basis. Okay. Um, when I go to Lead to go to Hawaii or Hawaii um, to Ohio, which is supposed to be on Friday. Um, 
then it would be at the headquarters. So I would be working on a full time basis then. Okay. So pretty much, is uh, when you get to Ohio, is that one of the things that you have to go into the office, or you you'll be able to work from home? No, we'd be in the office. Be in the office. Mm -hmm. You guys never took um, that step to kind of like go over her bank account, see if there's been any kind of um, like purchase a ticket or or any kind of purchase, anything like that. that. That your mom bought a ticket somewhere, you know, like a airplane ticket, Amtrak, Greyhound, you know, to travel over there or or you know help Rose out, you know, by pu putting gas in, you know, gas no, in the car, anything like that. The only ticket that she bought was she bought my ticket for me to Ohio. But, I mean, other than that, she, not that I'm aware of. Okay. And when you pay the bills, like, you know, you give them, you, you give the, 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 the payment to your mom, or mm -hmm. do you pass it to her account? How, how, how you guys work, how you guys work that out? I give my mom the money. Okay, gotcha. Right. Any, anything, anybody that you guys um, might think that, that she had ever kind of trusted outside of the family? Like a specific church member or anything like that? The only person she trusted outside the family was Marie and Harry. Okay, and they are? Um, their last name starts with a P. That's that house I showed you, the blue house on, okay. that, yes. on Old Tree mm -hmm. Creek. That's mm -hmm. Marie and Harry. Okay. Um, she trusted them implicitly. Um, she worked with them at Mercury. Okay. Um, the only thing that I and I didn't get a chance to tell you because I kind of went past me. The neighbor that is um, not directly across over here, the one with the green car, the lady with her son. Okay, if I'm facing your house, right? Okay, no. And, and, and if, I'm, well, if I'm facing your house and, uh, and I'm doing it like an about face. Okay, and now. Now I got your house to my back. Okay. Okay. The house. The house. Like right here. Yes. So if we're looking at a clock, twelve o'clock will be here. Mm -hmm. It'll be like about eleven, ten o'clock. Right. Okay. She has the fence, two dogs, she has a green car, a son, we drive oh. a truck. Okay. Um she asked me something last night, but they, you know, they told her that she needed to go, she couldn't talk to me. Um she wanted, she asked me and it didn't really register, but I mean she asked me if I knew the woman who came to visit mom. Which I don't. I mean, I, I, I don't know who she's talking about. Do you know her name? The lady across the street, do you know her name? I don't really know our neighbors. Okay. Yeah, another question I forgot to ask you is, I know you mentioned something about the next door neighbor that, I don't know. The one that's... The, a, that give you the Ouija V, I don't the know. The heebie-jeebies. The heebie, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about that neighbor? Why, why does he make you feel, oh, is he a he or she? He. Okay, what does... He makes you feel like that? I don't know. It's just, I guess it, it's a gut feeling. There's just, there's just something about him that just doesn't sit right with me. He just... Day clumsily tries to deflect suspicion onto someone else. Her reasoning is weak, saying she just has a feeling about him. She is at least smart enough not to give any specific examples that could prove she is deliberately lying. Uh, you know, it, it, it's like... Um, a couple of times, I mean, I actually started going inside and he came out. There was a couple of times that, like, uh, the woman's dad came over, and he, I was sitting on the back porch, and I don't, really, I don't keep a light on the back porch, so that way you can't see me when I'm out there smoking, but um, I keep a flashlight with me. But he left out the back door, and their backyard kind of has a, a berm in the back. Mm -hmm. He went to the very back, crouched down, and always I can see this because there's planks missing from the hurricane that they never replaced. Crouched down and I could see his uh, a light from his cigarette. And he stayed there the entire time her dad was there. And that just was like really odd. And from there it was like, okay, that just doesn't seem, you know. So I kind of just, mom and I just stay away from it, you know. And when he was outside, I would go inside, and Mom would do the same thing, because even she got the heebie-jeebies from him. Was he, well, he said hi to you guys, like, morning, wave? No, nope, didn't anything? speak. No, he no. never, I mean, we never, he never spoke to us, we never spoke to him, we never waved, we never even acknowledged. Uh, how old is this gentleman next door? Um, He's approximate. 
twenties. So. Yeah, late twenties, maybe thirty. I I would say late twenties. I haven't gotten. A, I don't know what he looks like close up, but from a distance, I would say mid to late twenties. Gotcha. I, I I don't know. I'm not very good at estimating age. Hey, um, just one more question. I just, just when Terry dropped you off. Carrie, Carrie. Carrie dropped you off. He went inside or he just dropped yeah. you off in the front? He just dropped me off. And he left? Yeah, it, that's not unusual either. Okay. Any, any additional questions? That's the rule. Um, you said your mom paid for your Ohio ticket. Mm -hmm. When was that purchased? Um, Saturday? This Saturday? Mm -hmm. Do you know what time? That, did you actually find them in, on the computer or something? Uh, yeah, I went to um, uh, Spirit. I, and she I got all the stuff in there and she put the card number in. And okay. And um, do you know what time of day this was? Was it during the daylight hours? Yeah, it was daylight. Because Saturday is the day you left to go to... It was before I left. Yeah, okay. So it was before 5. Okay. And it was with Spirit Airlines? Yes. Did you get your confirmation in an email or something like that? I did, and I gave it to one of the officers. It's flight 4060. I leave at um, 10.50 in the morning. Okay. And when's that? On Friday. On Friday. Um, and... You said that you know a lot about your, your mom's financials. I guess you try to help her. She's an older woman. Um, does she have multiple accounts? Does she have multiple credit cards? Do you know what kind of uh, to my financial credit she has? To my knowledge, she has a GM card, and that's because she has one, and I also she has me also on it. Mm -hmm. um, she has an Up Promise card, which we both have. She has one, and I did. I have one of mine. What's it, a Promise card? It, I've never it, heard of that. It's called Up Promise. It's just like a Visa or Mastercard. Okay, it's a credit uh, card. Yeah. Okay. Um, she has one, and I have. She has one with my name on it. Um, we share pin numbers, and same with the GM. Uh, card um, and then she has her CFE um, platinum credit card okay. through the bank. Um, her ATM card. Okay. Um, and I think that's it. And what did she use to buy your plane ticket? Uh, her CFE platinum card. Her credit card, not the ATM card. No. Okay. One of the biggest mistakes Day made was how she handled the money. Not only did she use her mother's card to buy herself a plane ticket, but surveillance videos at the ATM show her withdrawing several hundred dollars from her mother's account. She then placed large online orders, including a 50-inch television. A spending spree that close to a person's disappearance or murder is guaranteed to draw heavy scrutiny. Um. How is Tasha a great friend of yours? I'm assuming you guys. We no. We, she was a manager at Siggy's in St. Cloud, and that's how we met her. And um, she transferred to Orlando, mm -hmm. and she still comes to St. Cloud and brings the cigarettes to us. Bring. I don't get that. Brings the cigarettes to you. What's that mean? She rolls the cigarettes, and for thirty dollars, she brings um, Mark, me, and Judy. Uh, the 200 cigarettes was just equivalent to a carton, and it's only $30, but it's pure tobacco. Oh. And so she just brings them and drops them off at Mark's shop. I got you. Yeah. So, what's interesting? Um, it takes a lot of patience to do that, I would assume. They have a big machine. Oh, okay. <laughs> you just tell them <laughs> what brand, and you make sure, you, you tell them they put it in the computer, and you can pick mild, you know, you, the, it just doesn't have all the additives and all that other stuff in it. You pour it in the machine and it'll do like 200 cigarettes in a matter of minutes. Okay. And, and it's only 30 bucks. And Sunday, you said before, after you got dropped off and before Judy gets there. I met her and you, swapped them out. And where'd you meet? 
at Westgate. What's that? What's Westgate? Westgate in St. Cloud, uh, where um, CFE is, where uh, Big Lots is. Big Lots. Yeah. Um, and it was uh, where Siggy's used to be. There's another store there now. But we just, we met there and she came to the window. I handed her the menthol one. She handed me that. I now went out the, um, uh, what is it? Uh, is it CVS? Right down the corner. I went out there, turned, and went up um, Old Canoe Creek, um, Pine Tree, up to Rambler, to the house. And then you went home? Yeah, and I called Judy, and she was there two, three minutes. And you called Judy before she got there? Or? I called Judy before she, yeah, I called Judy before she got there. Okay. Um, I opened the front door. Marie and Harry, you guys know real well. Yes. And does your mom talk to them on a regular basis? Yes. Would you say daily basis? I wouldn't say daily, but mm -hmm. regular, yes. Okay. Do you have to say it's odd that your mom hasn't contacted anyone? Yes. Um, since we left yesterday, I know you didn't have your phone, but has anybody been trying to call your mom? I don't know. Okay. Have you or your dad or anybody at where you were staying last night have they been trying to call your mom am i well i don't think my dad did no my, but my i don't think my dad wouldn't because i don't know if my sister has um did you talk to your sister since you left here last night no okay. when i got to dad she was i'm sure already asleep and i would sleep and when i got up did you sleep? You. Mm -hmm. a, a couple hours. Okay. Did you? Um, and I called you. And mm -hmm. from what I understand, Dad said she had already left to go to work. And I, she says she doesn't like getting calls at work, so that's the reason I haven't talked to Judy. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Tried to call her or anything. Uh, to my understanding, she's in training, so I mean, and I, she, he's getting phone calls at work, unless it would be from you guys. Right. Me calling, have you heard anything? Would irritate her, and I, I and I don't want to do that. So, um, that and her, my dad don't speak, so she wouldn't call my dad's house. Right. And if I called her from my dad's house, she wouldn't answer. Why is that? Why don't they go? Why don't they talk? They had a falling out um, a couple of years back, and they haven't spoke. Judy considers my dad dead to her, so. Okay. They have absolutely nothing to do with each other. So they, yeah. she wouldn't answer her. What about Mark and, the, and the, her son? Do they talk to your dad at all? What's just she? They used to have a gate between the property and Dad and Katie went to Tennessee, and when they got back to get, they had removed the gate and put the fence up in place of it. Okay. It was over my niece. She got hurt. Nobody said anything, and it was a little thing that turned into this huge drama mountain, and it went from there. I tried everything to get them to reconcile, and I finally surrendered. How long was that? Day is presenting herself as the stable one in the family, mediating between fights between the other members. It is a manipulative technique and one that quickly becomes familiar to detectives with experience in interrogations. Two years ago. Well, two years ago. Okay. Shame. Maybe. Shame. Could be three years for all I know. Mm -hmm. I know at least two. So, I mean, if I called from my dad's house, there's no way Judy would answer. Um, has any family member called your dad or? Call your dad, trying to reach you. No. And try to, you know what I mean. No family member. You have any anything that the family members are talk. You know how it is. You know. You know how families are. No, nobody, so. fam nobody, family, no family member knew I was at my dad's. Gotcha. By the time I got to my dad's, I it was so I there was I didn't make any phone calls because I you know. You went to sleep. It, well, tired. well, I didn't go directly to sleep, but I mean it was like four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So, and I'm not saying that my other family members weren't awake. But a lot of them, anybody on my mom's side of the family wouldn't recognize my dad's phone number. Gotcha. So, and honestly, I couldn't remember my Aunt Joy's number because it's in my phone. 
and she would be there. And Marie, I don't know her phone number off the top of my head. So, I mean, there was not many phone numbers. I mean, those were two people I would have called, but I don't could remember their phone numbers. Where are you going to stay when you get to Ohio? Um, I have a friend, uh, Melissa Smith. She has, Melissa Smith. A, yeah, she has a house, and I'm going to be um, staying there until I find a place. Okay. Let's go check on that phone real quick. Yeah. yeah I'll be right back, okay? Uh -huh. You need anything, Kim? No, thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll be right back. Okay. So the little the little box just crashed. You swap it out some an SD card real quick. He said we should be done in a couple of minutes. Hey Judy, I wanna bring uh that's sorry, Amy. Apologize. My bad. I wanna ask you a couple more questions, okay? And and I need for you to be completely cheerful with me, okay? Alright. Base when was the last time you called you tried to contact your mom on your phone? When was the last time? Um, I want to say Saturday night, but I don't know exactly what time. And the next time was from the house. Judy in, was telling me that she had been trying to call her, and Morgan had been trying to call her, and I tried on Sunday. Okay. But since I couldn't leave a voicemail, I... Did it at least rang? The phone no, did it one rang? No, it just, all it said was, person you've reached um, has not set up a voicemail, so I assumed, and I know I shouldn't have, it she either was out of minutes, it was dead, or she had turned it off, or she turned the ringer, I mean, you know, and I knew she didn't have a phone charger. Okay. And I honestly thought she would call whenever they stopped. Okay. So I really wasn't too concerned. Okay. And then when Judy told me they'd been trying to call her and call her and call her and call her, then... Okay. How about if I tell you that the last, for your phone, the last phone call that you ever did to your mom, was on September 18th, which was Friday night, just before 11 o'clock at night. Will you be surprised about that? It's based on your phone information. Very. Okay. And then the call history, you know how you go through the call history and you can remove calls from the actual call history log, mm -hmm. what's removed, what's deleted. I don't delete my call history. Okay. Why not? That's coming straight from your phone, a phone that you own, the phone well, that you I use. Well, I mean, I understand that, but there's no reason for me to delete it. I mean, I have no reason to. Okay. No. And I know that I called my mother's cell phone. Okay. But after the 18th. I know I did. Okay. You said that the, you have an ePass account. Mm -hmm. Your mom has an ePass. The phone records are hard evidence, but Day chooses to continue to lie about her calls. It would have been better to pretend to have gotten the dates wrong or to have said she was embarrassed about not trying to call her mother as much as she should have. Account. Mm -hmm. And then Carrie mm -hmm. has an ePass account, right? Right. When you went to, when Carrie picked you up at your mom's house at your residence, mm -hmm. you guys left in Carrie's car, which is a, a black Mustang, mm -hmm. and he didn't pay the toll. He went through the e-pass section, right? He has a, he didn't stop, he, did he pay in, in the attendant or, and he went through the, he, he did not pay attention, he just went right through the sun pass, e-pass lane without stopping. When we went through the Kissimmee Park, it went through, but whenever the rest of them, he, did pay because, well, I guess the Z pound account was low. I don't know. Okay. Well, will you be surprised, or I would like to know what you would say if I told you that 
the last time that account was used was earlier this month. Carries, carries account, yes. And there's absolutely no record of him going through e-pass or anything like that. Yes, that would surprise me. Okay. So I'll give you already two things. You understand what I mean? That I, I understand. That I'll be able to confirm based okay. on the information I'm getting and stuff like that. I understand. You know, to confirm. So. I mean, but it, I, I don't, I can't give you an answer. But I mean, okay. Because I don't understand, but it does surprise me. Let's swap shoes for a moment. How will you feel about that? You've been in my shoes getting those stuff right now. I just I just want to know what happened to your mom. You know what I mean? What happened to your mom? I was and stuff like that. And I just want you to be honest with me. I, you, know, you ain't left in town, you know. Okay, I ain't left town, you know. I was, I was hanging out here, yeah, with another friend, but you understand know what I mean? So when you got those things, you just, you know, kind of a couple of exclamation points and, you know, a couple of flags are coming up. You understand know what I mean? I, I understand, and I... I I don't have an answer for you because I, I don't understand. And I do want to know what happened to my mother. I have no idea what's going on. That's what we're trying to find out. I know. And the only thing we ask from people, you know, to help us out and I'm is trying, to be completely honest with us. And that's what I'm, I, I am. I'm being completely honest with you because I want to find my mother. Yeah, we want to find your mother too. And right now, all, all, all we care is your mom, your mom's yes, safety. Yes, that's all I care about. Okay. Um, going back to your banking, your banking situation. You got your own account, mm -hmm. and your mom has her own account, right? Mm -hmm. Do you guys bank in the same bank? No, I bank at PSC. She banks at CFE. Okay. PSC, which one is that one? Uh, P PNC is PNC. yeah. It's directly across from um, Dairy Queen. Okay, okay. Across the street, like from Subway? Subway area around there? No, um, you have Dairy Queen and then you have like Prescription Unlimited. Gotcha, yes, and, yes. Well, yeah, and Subway is there, there yeah. on the corner, yeah, so it, it's right here, PNC. That's my bank. She banks at CFE. I have her account information, she has my account information. What can you tell me about, uh, has been any deposit made to your account? Mom wrote me a check for $2,500 that I did a mobile deposit for. A mobile deposit? Yeah, Is I, it a check or a mobile deposit? It's a check, but on my, uh, it's, there's, uh, PNC has an app where okay. you can do um, a, what's called a mobile deposit. You take a picture of the check and then it, it goes to your account after, what's that? A, after a few days. And where's that check at? Uh, she had, I gave it back to her. Okay. All I have to do is sign the back of it and then you have to put forward mo mobile deposit only, is what you do. So she writes it, and what day was that? When, what day was she wrote that, that check? That was on the uh, morning of the 19th. 19th, that's Friday. Okay, 20, no, wait, no. No, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday okay. morning, I'm sorry. Saturday, I apologize. yeah. I'm yeah. all messed up with my days, sorry. And I, yes. You're right. It, I apologize. Yeah, morning and Saturday. Okay. All right. So she paid for your ticket for Ohio, mm -hmm. and she used what what card? The CFE Platinum. Okay. That's a debit card or a credit card? Credit card. Credit card. And then she also gave you a twenty five hundred dollar check. check. And you said what? Just for me to go into my account to have, so that way she worried. You know, that way I had money and just in case I needed anything. She wanted to make sure that I was safe and taken care of. Okay. She didn't want me to have to, if I needed to get back or if I needed something or something happened. Day is unemployed, so her story about her mother giving her money is at least plausible, even if it isn't true. But the police will be able to look at the records, and if Day hasn't received money from time to time from her mother, the timing is going to become even more of a red flag. She wanted me to be able to have money to do it. Okay. Do you know your last four digits of your account number? That shows on your card? 5353. Five, okay. And that's with PNC, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a credit card, that's your your checking account, debit card. That's my checking account. Debit card, right? It's like a debit card? 
No, it's an actual, it's a checking account. Okay. Yeah, but I, debit card, I don't know what the last four digits are. Okay. That's at home in my purse. So, being here right now and asking you that about your phone, about the phone calls, and about the e pass. And now this all comes to light about, you know, now there's a, actually a, a wire check, digital check transfer to your account. You understand what I mean? This thing came up last night, early today. They didn't come up earlier and stuff like that. I didn't think anything of it, really. I mean... But come on, Amy. You know, the, the, don't you think that, that that would have been important? It, it is, but I mean, I'm, I can't remember everything when I'm that tired. I'm, my brain... Well, listen, is, I'm tired, too. I, I, I understand that, but I mean, you, your brain works different than my brain. Mine is going at 100 miles an hour. I'm trying to remember everything. I'm trying to be able to tell y'all everything. And I'm, I'm trying... It, it, everything I can to give y'all all the information that you need, be completely truthful with you, and try to remember everything. And sometimes I can't. And I, I'm sorry for that, but I just, I just, I, I can't remember everything all the time when I'm trying so hard to remember everything to be able to tell you guys. But my mom giving me money is not anything that's unusual. Buying a ticket for me is nothing unusual. What do you think Carrie's going to say when we contact him? If we contact him? What do you think Carrie's going to say? That he came pick me up at 5 o'clock and he dropped me off. And he's going to tell you that he paid for the tolls and he's not doesn't know why his son passed didn't register. What do you think Tosh is gonna say when we go talk to her? That we met at Westgate and that we swapped out cigarettes and that she left and I left. You just don't understand. It's like you're telling me some information here about the phone calls that you made for your, to your mom, tried to receive from your mom. You're telling me that. And then, however, when we go to your phone, you hear it from you to, to see, to take a look, stuff like that. You, your phone is giving us a complete different story of what you're sharing with me. I can't answer you on that. I, I have absolutely no idea. I don't. I don't know why my phone is doing what it's doing. I don't know what's going on with my phone. It doesn't matter if you delete it or try to get rid of some information. The phone always keeps that information. I understand that, but I mean, I don't understand. I don't know why my phone is doing what it's doing. I don't, I don't understand. I can't give you an answer. I don't know enough about phones. I don't, I, I cannot give you an answer on this. I know what I did, I, but I can't tell you why my phone is not telling you that. I can't. I wish I could. We're trying to get to, to, to find your mom. I understand that. Okay. Your mom is very important to you. I can see that you love your mom very much. Very. But you're... I would do anything to you're find You're telling us some information. You try to confirm that information. That information is completely opposite of what you're telling us. Contradict what you're telling us. You understand what I mean? I, I understand. So it, it just, it, it just, I, I just want you to to understand in what kind of position you know that puts me. You understand what I mean? So I'm not saying I'm having doubts on you with you, but like I said, you just bring some some red flags, and I'm just trying to sit down here with you right now and be able to for you to for you and me to put our heads together and try to be able to understand all the pieces of the puzzle. You understand what I mean? I understand. And the only thing I ask for you to is to is to be completely honest. And I me. am being. Okay. I, I just don't want you. I just don't want you to handle yourself by holding information by lying to me. I'm, I don't I'm want not. you to do that. I, and I'm not. And I. And I'm Although it is evident that Day isn't fooling anyone with her story, she insists that she is telling the truth. 
and any inconsistencies are the result of an overtaxed memory. The police know that even innocent, honest people will not be entirely accurate 100% of the time, but nothing Day has said has matched with any of the evidence. I honestly cannot answer why my phone is not telling you what I'm telling you, because it should be. Not correct. I mean, it, it, it should be telling you exactly what I'm telling you. My phone should indicate all of that. That is correct. And I don't know why it's not. I cannot answer you on that. I, I, I'm sorry. I, just, I, I don't know. But it should be telling you exactly what I'm telling you. I mean, what I'm telling you, you should be able to look at my phone and go, okay, this is exactly everything. And I don't know why it's not. I honestly do not. I wish I could tell you. Gotcha. I want to find my mother more. I want to bring you my home. Yes. I want to bring it to the girl, to you girls. I, I don't, I, I would do anything in the world to find my mother. And... That's the reason I'm being completely honest with you. I'm trying to remember everything. I'm trying to remember every word, every conversation, everything by minute by minute. And I... Everything is just getting all jumbled. I can't remember times. My, my job description and my, and my job is to get the facts, investigate, talk to people, and, and assist the family. You understand what I mean? That's what I'm trying I know. to do. I know. Okay. And then when everybody puts all the effort and the, you know, every, everybody has roles. You understand what I mean? I got my role and stuff like that. The information I get from you and the family members that you guys put on the on the table is what I take and I run with it. I know. You understand what I mean? And that that's what that get the machine going. I know. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what we when, when we get the conclusions and stuff like that, confirm this, confirm that, and stuff like that. That's what investigations are. Taking all the facts, can be able to confirm, look into it, do research, and we get the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. I understand. So the only thing I ask you, uh, Amy, sorry, is for you to be completely honest with me, okay? And be able to think and help me out and I hope yeah, I hope you out and be able to share information and you know, change, you know, be able to share with each other thoughts. Mm -hmm. And that we'll be able to understand mm -hmm. and to move on. Okay, from this hiccup right now that I got. You know what I mean? Yes, it is uh, right now I give I gave you three things right now that if it weren't for my investigation, you would have mentioned the situation with the, with the phone now, with the e-pass, and now that transfer, that wire transfer. You understand what I mean? So I, the, I, the transfer is not unusual. Okay. Does yeah. she does that every month? Not every month, but she. How does. often does she transfer that amount of money to 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 your account for just for you just every just to have it? Every few months. And why does she does that? If you were, you got your own income and you pay bills. Why are you gonna give money to her for her to pay bills? We to pay you half, and then she's giving you a lot more money than what you pay her on a monthly basis to pay bills. I just don't get. It. She's trying to help me get a car. Okay. So how much money has she given you? Let's say of this amount, in the last year. Where was was in September? From January to September, how, how many times she given you this? Because you know I work. You know what I mean. I'm not rich. You know what I mean. And, I, and you know, and somebody give me twenty five hundred dollars, I consider that holy crap. Uh, well, you understand what I mean? Like, yeah. oh my God, man. You're right. You understand what I mean? You're just like that's a lot of money for me. Right. But that's my personal. You know, for my my opinion, you know, twenty five hundred dollars is a lot of money. Yes. You know how often does she does that? Like from January to to not September. How how often has um, she done that? Four times. Four times. And but unfortunately, um, so I it has been twenty five hundred dollars the same amount, or she what, what has been the amount? It's five hundred. It's two thousand. It's twenty five hundred. But do you um, remember the amounts? 
it's just been those three. It's been so like five hundred, right? It's been a five hundred. Oh, okay, one second. Let's do something real quick. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Six hundred. Okay. Um. So that's six hundred. That's the first time. That was one. That's one. Uh, you remember one? No. The uh, beginning of the year it was cold. This year. Time. It was this year. Okay, six hundred. Um. As the saying goes, follow the money. Greed is one of the top mistakes made by murderers, and Day has left them a pretty big trail to follow. For a premeditated crime, it was poorly thought out. It, uh, it's kind of the 2,500 to that, uh, the other, the, this reason, so that's 2,500. There's 2,500, there's, 2, there's okay. 600, um, 400, and I think another 600. I know it's 600? Mm -hmm. So two times that she gave you 600, and then one time she gave you 400, and now she gave you 2,500? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that, that's a big jump. Right. You know, from going just for a couple hundred dollars, now all of a sudden, I mean, that's a drastic jump. Any reason why? That's forty-one hundred dollars. You told me that she gave you. Giving you from she's January to. She's wanting to try and help me get a car, but she's also trying to help me get um, health insurance because I lost my health insurance, and so she's trying to help me get my health insurance. And unfortunately, health insurance right now is like three hundred dollars a month. So until I get health insurance you know, kicked in, it's going to be $316, $343 okay. because of blood pressure and my heart condition. Okay. Um, so she's trying to help me with that. So if I look a little bit more into your mom's account and your account, I'm going to be able to see those transfers or yes. those deposit from your mom's account to your account. Yes. And how do you guys did those transfers? The same way that you did the $2,500? Some was cash and... Um, I, one was one was a check, and then. Um, Which one was the check? I don't remember exactly which one, um, but mostly it's been cash because it goes into effect right then. So. What do you mean goes into effect right then? It, it's available to you. Okay. Did she put the cash in your account? She gives it to me, I go to the bank and deposit it at the ATM. Okay. Just the same way she did in this one, this most recent one. That, she gave me the check and she had me do the, uh, on my app, my PN, PNC app. Okay. Um, if I have my phone, I could show it. Who wrote it. the check? She did. Okay. Um, if I have my phone, I could show it to you. Okay. What I'm talking about. Okay. It's an app, you go to it, and it says deposit, and you put the uh, which account you want it to go to, how much, you take a picture of the front of the check, the back of the check, and then um, you hit continue, and then you wait for it to clear your account, which could be anywhere from five to seven days. And that was the reason some of the times she did the deposit. It gave me the cash because that way I could just go to the bank and put it in the bank. How long have you had, you had your phone for? How long? Since when? Um, over five years. Over five, same number for over five years? Yeah. Okay. Same company, Boost? Mm -hmm. okay. You had the same phone for the five years or you've been Upgrading them. Well, I've been upgrading them, but I kept the same phone number. Okay. Yeah. How long you have this style phone? Your style phone, the, the smartphone. Uh, how long? since how about six months? Six months. Yeah. Maybe uh, seven. Okay. All right. No, probably about six months. All right. Let me see if that phone's ready. That way, you can show me that check. Okay. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. It's being charged right now. And it says I sold there that it's not will not, will not even turn on with the with the with the plug on. That doesn't sound right. When it's plugged in, my phone will turn on. When it's very dead, when the phone's even this iPhone, when it's completely dead, no, you turn it on and you plug it in, it will turn on that it's charging, but it will not have enough charge to turn on on to power on completely. Mine normally does. 
that's that's what I just went over there. It's not gonna turn on. I just got the little sound that's charging with the light with the red light, and it's plugged in and it's not turning on. Then it shows the battery. It I shows know, the battery. I, I understand that, but I mean that that's something wrong with them because so my phone. We, we we just gotta give it a couple minutes and I know it'll okay, fire up. But the, I mean that I understand what you're saying, okay. but I have my phone is I've zeroed it out and it where it's turned off. Okay. And. I plugged it in and I still been able to turn it on. So there's something wrong with my phone because it should be turning on. I don't know. I ain't no phone guy, but not only is Day's memory faulty, but her phone isn't working. That might delay the investigation, but it won't erase whatever she is trying to hide. I'm not I gotta, either. But I'm I gotta just, go by I'm the just, set, so I know. I'm just. I'm telling you that that has happened before. You know that we're gonna confirm and reconfirm everything. You don't. You understand that, right? Yes. Okay. Um, the thing I don't get, I have e-pass. So, I have e-pass. Mm -hmm. um, the times when my e-pass have gone to zero balance, I have gone through it, it was still registered. Okay? Okay. So, you're telling me, you're sitting here, if I'm saying, and your e-pass is in your purse, right? Yes. Okay. So, you said that Carrie's e-pass was going low balance, but guess what? I did take my e pass. And, you know, okay, okay, forget about about your e pass. Let's talk about carries. Okay. It doesn't show carry up here using the e pass, but even the e pass register or anything like that it doesn't show carry nowhere here. I'll tell you that right now. That's for a fact. Okay. When you went to see Tasha to do the 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 thing about the cigarettes, exchange right. the cigarettes, mm -hmm. you went straight home, right? Yes. You didn't stop nowhere else? No. Okay. You sure about that? After I left Tasha, yeah. Okay. So you went from your house straight to see oh, Tasha. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait, 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 no, wait. Oh, there it is. Wait, wait. I'm, there it is. I'm trying to... Okay. Please. Go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I stopped at, um... What's that place? Um... It's a, a storage. Okay. I stopped there. Okay. And I was there for a couple of minutes, and then I left, and then... Any reason why you stopped at the storage? Do you have storage there? I don't have storage there, but I was going to see about how much it would cost to rent, some because there's some stuff that I'm not going to be taking with me. What storage is that one? Where at? Uh, it's next door to uh, what used to be Mickey's. Uh, it's on Old Canoe Creek. Um, it was a gas station store. Yeah, nah, I gotta look it up. I don't know. I, I can't remember the name of it, but it's I mean it's orange. It went inside. No, the they said to call the manager and but nobody, you know, answered. I knocked on the door. But I was only there for a couple of minutes. I backed out and then went straight home. But I was only checking to see how much storage was. Was that on the way to see Tasha? Or that was no, that was on my way back? home. That was on my way home. Okay. I can tell you that there's nothing wrong with your phone. I'll tell you that right now. And I want you to understand your phone is going to tell me exactly where you've been. Okay. You understand that, right? Yeah. And that's why I'm here talking to you because I want to give you the opportunity for you to tell me where you were. Hopefully, I'm hoping that you be honest with me and tell me, prove me wrong that the information that you're telling me is the same information that it shows on your phone. You, know, you understand what I'm getting through? Yeah. You understand what I mean? The only thing I ask from you, Amy, is for you to be completely honest. I have that. Okay. But right now, the information I got from your phone. It's not matching up with what you told me or where you've been. Or what you have done. And the same thing with the e-pass. Carrie's e-pass. I can't tell you about Carrie's e-pass. I, I, you sound what I mean? I, I can't tell you about that. I don't know. I can't answer you on that. How much money do you have in your purse? Uh, 405 
and where the where that money came from? Um, I stopped an ATM. Okay, when? Sunday. What? Sunday. I don't know exactly what time. In the morning, the afternoon. Morning. Day becomes more evasive with her answers, and the detective is pressing her harder. He does not believe that she is telling him the truth and doesn't hesitate to let Day know. For some reason, Day believes that her best option is to continue lying rather than confessing or exercising her right to remain silent. Before lunch, after lunch, before, before lunch, before lunch. Okay. What bank was that? Uh, BB&T. Where's that one at? Uh, well, there's one on 192. Well, which one is the one that you stopped? That's what I'm asking. I don't know exactly which one it is. It's on 192. I don't know exactly which one. Put yourself in my situation, Amy. You see what I'm getting through? I keep giving you a little bit, putting out more things on the table. And all of a sudden, oh my god, boom, boom, boom. A little light comes on. Oh, I'm yeah, that's trying. right. I am trying. I am trying. Yeah, as far as giving, it's giving to me, you, you give me the assumption that you're holding back. You, you, you just don't want to tell me everything. I'm not intentionally holding anything back. I am trying. I, honest to God, am trying. I am not holding anything back. I, I honest to God, am trying. I don't have the best memory in the world, but I honestly Me neither. But honest to God, but I, situations I'm, like this, very seriously, I tell you this right now, I'll make an effort I'm to trying, really remember. Yes, I'm trying. And very important things that happen to the, in the day, very big <sighs> stuff that happened during the day, I'm going to remember. I'm, you see, for a fact that you remember you meeting up with Tasha to exchange some cigarettes, <sighs> but you don't remember stopping on the bank, not stopping out of storage, and all that kind of stuff. I'm and that, all that taking half an hour. I just don't get it. I'm trying. I am trying. Honest to God, I am trying. I know you're tired. I'm exhausted. And I, I'm trying. Honest to God, I am trying. I don't know what to tell you, but I am trying. Put, myself in my put yourself in my situation, in my shoes, and I'm sitting in your chair. You're asking me the same questions I'm asking you about something very important that pertains to your mother. And all of a sudden, you're not remembering anything of where you've been, and where do you go, where do you stop. It has to be me take, giving you a little bit for you to remember. This is very important, Amy. This, it pertains to your mother. The well-being of your mother, where your mom go, who your mom is with right now. The important mission right now is to get your mom home, safe and sound, back to her daughters. I'm aware of that. That's and you're I not want. making it easy right now with me, for me. I'm not because, trying to make it difficult. Because right now, information I'm getting contradicts completely. Oh, why are you telling me, Amy? It's been a long night for you, a long weekend for you, for you and your family. Time is time is going by. You need to let me know and be completely honest with me. What happened this weekend? I feel that you haven't been honest with me completely, Amy. I feel like you're holding things back. I'm not. And you need to be completely honest with us. I am, and I'm not holding anything back. Because based on what you know, you tell me, you spend most of the time with your mom that actually Judy does. You live with her. You guys live together. Yes. You guys share a lot of time together, a lot of memories. You guys pay bills. Yes. 
You need to be completely honest with me for us to do our job, Amy. I understand that, and I am, and I am trying to remember everything. Honest to God, I am. All I want is to find my mother, and all I want to do is give you the information to be able we to We have to you. look everywhere. I know. Every avenue. I know. See who's lying to us, who's not lying to us. I know. You understand what I mean? And the more I dig and dig and dig, you understand what I mean? Your story is not making sense of what I got right now, Amy. I don't know what it's not confirming what you're telling me since the last night. Day is starting to show signs of cracking under pressure. She isn't able to remain calm, and her voice rises in poorly suppressed panic when she tries to deny that she is lying. She is showing more emotion here than she does over the disappearance of her mother. And I want you to be completely honest with me. I, I want you to take a deep breath and say, you know what, Joel? I'm sorry. Yes, I did forgot to tell you. And then and let's start fresh. But you need to tell me step by step. And we took our time last night. And we took it day by day, hour by hour, phone call by phone call, person by person. And then I come today, we try to reconfirm what you told us last night, which is pretty much the same thing. And then I get all this information dump on my desk on my lap that is showing me that you're not telling me the truth the only thing I ask for you for the sake of your mother Amy for her truth. safety for you to tell me the truth right now we need to get your mom home I agree all right I got back before 11 o'clock. Okay. From where? From Chiefland. Okay. Got back before 11 o'clock. I got back probably about 9 o'clock. Okay. I left. I went towards Nova Road. I turned around, I took a call from Marie, I stopped at a junkyard or something, I talked to her, I went into St. Cloud, I stopped at bb and I went to Westgate, I stopped at storage, went home, and I called my sister. Okay. What car were you driving? Mom's. Mom. When you got back home, what was it? What was inside the house? Nothing. I mean, just it was exactly as it was when me and Judy when Judy walked in the door. The key was there. I just grabbed it, got in the car. I ran my errands, and then I called Judy. And that's a good step right now. You just took. But why? 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 Why, why it took this long for you for you to come out with that? Why? Think about how it makes me sound. We're humans. We make mistakes. You don't understand. I don't, my, I don't no, understand. You I don't, don't. No, you don't understand my sister. She would take that and she would think that the most horrible person ever walked on this earth that I put myself in front of my mother and I don't. I don't. But that's what she would think. And so would my Aunt Joy. And I don't. I put my mother first. Listen to me. I stopped and talked to Marie because I got upset. And I didn't want to be driving while I was talking to her on the telephone. Okay. She can confirm that. Okay. We went over everything. What, 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 what you guys went over? The last time she talked to my mother, what my mother said. what she thought was going on and I told her I would keep her up to date that I was supposed to be meeting my sister and that I would call her. Let's forget about your sister. Let's forget about your aunt. It, Let's just think about Amy and Ma. There is okay? Let's forget about those people. There's nothing I wouldn't do for The only thing I care right now 
It's a conversation that I'm having with you right now and I'm about your mom's safety. Okay, let's put all the, everybody back. Nobody pays your bills. You pay your own bills, right? Yes. You, give, you work, you pay your mom, and you guys pay your bills, right? And she helps me out. Exactly, okay. exactly. So it's a team, right? Yes. 50 50, she helps you, you help her out. Okay, then why, Amy, took this one for you just to talk, come out with that? Because it makes me sound like a horrible person. You're not a horrible person. We all make mistakes. Put yourself in my shoes. My mother is missing. It makes me sound like a horrible person. It really does. I put errands before my mother. But let's go back to, we've been talking since last night. Why it took until I didn't want to sound almost 4.55. I didn't want to sound like a horrible person. So why? This is this is stuff that I need to that I need to I know. I know, I know. You know what I mean? And I know. You can I tell you something? That information you just told me right now, I knew it already. I just needed you for you to take that step of faith and put on on the table for you to tell me what I know already. Okay? There's a start. It's not everything, okay? We have to move on. In a burst of emotion, Day tries to play on the sympathies of the detective. She alters her story a bit, but this isn't going to be enough to distract them from getting to the bottom of what is going on. Okay. So, let's start from, let's start from the time that you got back home. What time you left Chief, Chief Land? Chief? That place of Seven. Chief Land. Okay. Just at Gainesville. Okay, Gainesville. Okay. And um, and you were with Carrie. Yes. And still driving the, his same car, his yes. black car? Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys took the same route, right? Yes. Um, that state road was the... Two Alternate 27 to 75 right. to Turnpike to the Kissimmee Park exit. Okay. Okay. Did he drop you off? Yes. Did he go inside the house? Yep. Okay. How do you enter the house? How do you get in the house? The screen door on the front was locked, so I went through the gate on the side of the house and went through the back door underneath the cover, mm -hmm. and it leads into the kitchen. Okay. And bo both were both locks? Locked? Both locks were, were locked. Okay. Um, I walked in and put my purse down. I saw the key and just grabbed it, went out the garage door, got in the car. And do you, do you I looked around I the mean, house? I looked around, but everything, I mean, I looked in the kitchen. I, I looked in the living room. I did go to the bathroom, in my bathroom. Um, and I just kind of glanced in my bedroom. Everything, I mean, nothing looked out of place. So I walked back into the kitchen. I grabbed what I could see in my mother's room, you know, I mean, all I could see was the dresser and part of the bed and her black chair, which was where it was. How made. was the bed? Bed was completely made. Okay. Um, black chair was exactly where it was supposed to be. There was, uh, the dresser was just like it always is. The bathroom door was open, you know, for, I mean, everything looked normal. So I just grabbed the spare key, I went out the garage door and got in the car, opened the garage door and backed out, did the errands and then drove back and called my sister. Okay. All right, let's go back a little bit right now. Let's slow it down a little bit, okay? Um, I'm saying you were a little bit emotional when you told me exactly what you did, okay? But I just want to make sure that we cover every step, okay? So you took the spare key out, Got out of the car, back the car out of the garage. No, the spare key was on okay. the... Okay, no, 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 okay. Uh, you got the keys, you did everything you had to do in the house, notice everything yeah, inside the house. Yeah, the spare key then was you got on, in the the kitchen, car. on the kitchen counter. Okay. Yeah. You got in the car, you, you backed out the car out of the garage. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you left out. You left the house. Which way you you, you left the house? You went towards um, Rambler? Hickory Tree. Hickory Tree? Okay. What was the first place you stopped? Um, at that um, what, salvage yard when Marie called me. Okay, so we're going on Hickory Tree, and it was around what, approximately what time? Uh, 9.30. Okay. 
Ten. Okay. So you go on Hickory Tree. You go towards 192. Right, right. 192. Which I turn one? left. You turn left? Mm hmm Okay. I went towards Nova, did a U-turn at Nova. Make a left towards Nova. You sure? I'm, I'm sorry, right, right, sorry, I'm sorry, right. Uh, there at 7-Eleven, mm -hmm. I turned right on the 192. Okay. Went towards Nova, got to Nova, did a U-turn. Marie called me and I pulled into, I believe it's a salvage, I don't know exactly the name of it, I just saw it was a business. I pulled in there, stopped the car, and talked to her um, 15 minutes, maybe 20, I don't know. Um, I told her that, you know, I would give her a call back, um, did that, got back on the 192, went down 192. Uh, there's a BB and T on the left. I stopped there. Um, got four hundred dollars. Left there. Which, um, when you got to the BB and T, that bank right down the corner. Mm -hmm. um, you do you use an ATM? Yes. Which ATM do you use? Do you, do you have to get out of the car and walk up to the place? No, it's the one that you can drive up to, and it's right there at your window. Okay. The tears are switched off as soon as Day goes back into story mode. Surprisingly, her memory kicks in well enough for her to recall exactly when and where she turned her car and how long she stopped at each place. Um, and who banks there? Nobody. nobody. I just, it was just it was the first okay. bank, so I just stopped there. Okay. Um, and then I left there. And how, I'm sorry, and how much money you took out of there? Four. Okay. All right, from your account? Uh, no, actually from my mother's account. Okay. Um, Any reason why? What's from your mother's account? No, it was just, she said I could do it, so I did. When did she say that? When did she give you the permission to take out the $400? Friday. Friday? Mm -hmm. Okay. So all this time, it's done. She gives you a check for $2,500 that you electronically deposit in your account. Mm -hmm. She also pays you plane ticket and then she also gives you the day before permission to do it on Sunday to withdraw $400? Mm -hmm. That was extremely generous Okay. Just making the math, that's like over $3,000 in less than a weekend. Well, I mean, you understand I, what I mean? On my phone, I can show you all of this. Hopefully, next break that we take. Okay. You know, I can show you my account, I can show you her account. Okay. Um, but left there, drove through town, went to Westgate, met Tasha. Mm -hmm. Left out that dude by CVS, turned on Kissimmee Park, stopped at that storage place. And like I said, they didn't press for the manager. Nobody answered. Knocked on the door. They have surveillance. You can check. Um, left there, got back onto Kissimmee Park or Old Kenny Creek, and drove straight through. Crossed over on Pine Tree. Turned on Rambler. Went in Lakeshore. Pulled into the garage. Called my sister within a couple of minutes, opened the door, she was there, she came in. Okay. Why was that so hard for you to tell us that yesterday? Why, why, why didn't you start with that yesterday? That was simple, Amy. That was the reason I just don't, I just don't understand. Amy. Understand what I mean? You don't know my family. That has nothing to do with your family now. Okay? Let's, let's forget about your family right now. Let's just think about Amy and let's think about mom. I know. Forget about the family. You know, family's family, but nobody pays your bills. You pay your own bills. But. Okay? And, you, and, and right now, let's forget about that because in this situation right now, Amy needs to be selfish. And Amy needs to think about mom right now. To do whatever she needs to do to get mom home back to her life. Yes. To be able to both of you guys to keep going with your life. I agree. Okay? And that's all I want. Okay. The only thing I just want to understand, Amy, is like putting your family aside, why that was so hard for you to tell me. And we spoke yesterday for, I don't know how long we spoke yesterday. I know. You understand what I mean? And then we spoke on the phone this morning about two, three times. I know it was short. And I was you know, and then we spoke today, you know, you understand what I mean? And, and you just, you had the opportunity to talk. And I, and I was with my dad. I understand that. 
I don't even know, need to know about this, okay? I know, but if I had said my dad was sitting right there listening... You're an adult. I understand that took you to his, into his house. But you could have told me, hey, Joel, can, he I, can, I please, can I please speak to you in private? We could have, we could have gone and talk somewhere. You understand what I mean? I because you're an adult. You know, I know it's not his your dad, and dad would be always be dad. And he would have thought that I wasn't... It, my dad cop brain would have kicked in and but anyways once again day turns on the tears when the detective asks why she didn't just say all of this in the first place family dynamics can be difficult and no one wants other members to know about their private business but all of that goes out the window during a police investigation the detective finds it hard to believe that this petty concern would take precedence over day doing everything she can to help find her mother but you know I was I didn't want to sound selfish that I was putting myself in front of my mother because I'm not and I didn't think that anything I did was gonna make help find my mom I I didn't I didn't think any of those things would help find my mom and I didn't know that my mom was missing. And I didn't want to sound selfish. The only thing I want to do, Amy, is find her. I know. That's the only thing. I want to bring back that home to you. That look, that smile. I know. And I need to find out where did she go and what happened. I know. I want the same thing. But I honestly didn't think any errands that I did that morning would change. I mean, didn't affect anything. I know I should have told you, and I'm sorry. And. That, that, that pulls me back a little bit, you know what I mean? But so here for that being, trying to confirm everything that you had told me, that would have been the time that I would have done, you know, moving on and be able to and keep I doing some you stuff. Your time no, I haven't wasted my time. Because this, this is my job. You spun your wheels no, because no. I didn't... I, we're a machine. We're a supercharged machine right now. I know that, okay? but you were spinning your wheels because no. I... See, but now you have the opportunity, Amy. Because we have moved on from that to be able to, for you to put everything on the table. That is everything. And tell me a little bit more what to be able to figure out what happened to your mom. What else can I tell you? I don't know anything else. The only thing I, I want to avoid, Amy, is be able to get the information back from the phone company. Okay? And that will open something else that contradicts part of your story. I don't want I don't want that to happen. And I need for you to look at me straight in the eyes. Okay. With your blue eyes to my dark brown eyes <laughs> and tell me, Joel, the phone's gonna show me where I was. And I was up in Chief in Chief Chief Line Gainesville. It's going to show you that. It's gonna show me that you were up in Gainesville. Yes. On the weekend and you came back Sunday. It's gonna show you what time I was there. It's okay. gonna show you what time I left. It's going to show you everywhere I was at. And it's going to show me every phone call they did to Mary yes. and everybody you talked to. Yes. Okay, she's going to Mary. show I'm sorry. The, that lady that you said you talked to? Marie. Marie, I'm sorry. That was on Marie, Sunday. Marie, Mary, Mary. Well, that was, that was on Sunday mm -hmm. morning. Okay. But yeah, it's going to show. It's going to show me even more detail. So even going to show me the, the phone calls that you say that they disappeared from your phone about your mom. The phone calls that you made to your mom. Yes. You're going to show me everything. It's going to show you everything. Inbound, out calling, you everything. know, outbound, you name it. Everything. Okay. It's going to show so you, you everything. you promised to me right now, you swear that, it's going to show me all that. Hand to God, I swear, it's going to show you everything. Okay. It's going to show you my exact location, times, everything. Okay. Hand to God. Okay. All right. My mother... I want her home. I want her home too. I want to go home right now and see her standing in the living room. That's what I want. I want to bring her home. I know. 
I want to go home and see her steady in the living room. The only thing, you, you, you don't want to have in my heart right now? I want to get you home and get her home and see you guys reunite. That's what I want. I want to give her the biggest hug. I would never let her go. Never. What will you do different if you had the opportunity, Amy? If we, if we are with, if, when we find your mom, what will you tell her? What will you do if we have the power right now to take a, let's say there's a remote, to hit rewind, what will you do different? I would leave on Saturday. I would not leave. No? No. You would stay where? I would want to be at the house. I would, I would, I would want to be there. And maybe this would have happened. If you have your mom in front of you right now, what would you tell your mom? I loved her very much. As much as Tay cries about wanting her mother to come home, she isn't releasing any new information. She is stalling for time and hoping to earn some pity from the detective in hopes he will go easier on her. And that she's the most important person in the world to me. And there isn't anything I want to do for And then I would hug her and let her go. And see, Delta Dog with her. It's the first time she ever taught me. Well, she will tell you by you telling her those, those <laughs> words. Well, what would be her reaction? She would cry and tell me that she loved me. And you the young, youngest? Yeah. You're the baby? There's nine years between me and Judy. So your mommy's, mommy's little girl. Mm -hmm. And she's my mommy. Mom will always be mom. She's not my mom. She's my mommy. She's always been my mommy. I'm trying to get you guys there back is, together. No, there's, I mean, I have never ever wanted to disappoint her or make her unproud of me or... <laughs> And I know that on a couple of occasions, I have disappointed her and it killed me. Okay. If you ever had an opportunity in your life to be able to make up for any wrongdoing or any mistakes, no matter how small the mistakes made into the biggest one, to make things right, how will you do it again? How, you, how will you make it up to her? How will you make it up to her? I would marry my ex-husband. <laughs> to start with that one, right? It, that's the biggest one. That's right. It, that, that's, that's the biggest thing. She was very disappointed when I married my ex-husband. And then the substance abuse that I had, she was very disappointed. I know I blamed it on my ex-husband, but I wouldn't do that. Those have been my two biggest regrets in my life, because I know those have been two biggest things that disappointed her. And I wouldn't do it. I would listen to her. When she told me, don't marry him, I wouldn't. And I think my life would have been I know my life would have been completely different. She sounds, she sounds like she is a very wise woman. She is. She also sounds, uh, the way that you describe her, uh, she's very, her faith is, she has a lot of faith in God. She is. She's Stuff, and she tries to be the best person that she can be. She's a, she's a very Christian woman. She doesn't cuss. She doesn't, she doesn't lie. She doesn't. She's the best woman I know. But you're aware of this you said right now. If I, if I could go back, I would be exactly like her. But she, whatever place you sat right now, in Colorado, whatever state or city you know, nearby us, 
I bet you should be praying for you right now. I'm trying to send God's angels and her blessing, God's blessing to come around you. Did I pray for her? It said my prayers to her, begging God. I think she'll be doing the same thing for you guys too. Well, I've been praying for her and I've been begging God for you guys to be able to find her and bring her home. Or somebody, not just it, not just you, anybody, to please just God break her home. And I've been doing that since yesterday. When I saw that first suitcase, or that blue and black one, actually, I should say. As soon as I saw that, I, my How you gut, felt? What you thought? Tell me anything. My, my gut, I, my heart sank. Why? Tell me, tell me, tell me a second what you felt, what you thought, because, what had in your mind. Tell me. Because that duffel bag is always on the shelf, top shelf, in the garage on the far wall. And it is not that I knew they were in the attic and my mother would never put anything in the attic because of the heat. It doesn't matter if she was, she wouldn't put clothes up there, she would give them to Goodwill. That, because that's who she is. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason her and I have a bag of stuff that's going to Goodwill. But it's, you know, it's, she would never do that. And as soon as I saw that, my heart sank because I knew something was... The detective plays on Day's emotions by trying to get her to focus on her mother. He has her imagine a scenario where she speaks to her mother and how her mother would react. Many times when a death is unintentional and then covered up, this is enough to break a suspect down. Day, however, has no remorse and is able to continue as if she isn't aware of the fact that her mother is dead. Definitely not right. And. After that, I don't, I mean, my mind just kind of zoned down on me for a little bit because I didn't know what emotion to have. I mean, there was all of them. I didn't know whether to scream, cry, yell, beg. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know. I just knew it was not good. Because I know my mom, she would give it to goodwill so other people could use them for jobs or to start over. She wouldn't put them in the attic. She wouldn't. And she taught me that. That it's better to help people to start over than to let stuff just rot or let rats eat it. My mother is a wonderful person. And I want her home so bad. She's my best friend. If you had the information or let's say some kind of revelation from God or some kind of psychic powers <laughs> to of knowing where your mom is will you let me know are you asking me if god told me where my mother yes. was at yes if god would speak to you in your dream or yeah. while you're praying for your mom will you share that information with me yeah if you have any knowledge of where your mom is will you share that with me too yes you will not hold it back? No. If somebody will tell you, hey, I believe your mom's over here or over there, or I heard, I think I saw her, will you share that with me too? I would call you, tell okay. you. This doesn't person, matter the time. Doesn't matter the time. This person told me this, I would get their phone number or address, full name. This person told me this, this is their information. Please go talk to them. Gotcha. I don't care if it would be two, three, four o'clock in the morning. I know you probably wouldn't like that, but I'm sorry. 24-7. I, in order Right to now, right now, can I tell you something? Right now, my goal, my goal and is from your mom. 
Okay. And I'm, M I'm me, not, my family, understands my calling, understands my career. I know. And there's sometimes during my career and my time you have to be where, away from your family. Where my family is is understanding. My family is not selfish that my wife has to see her husband and my kids need to see daddy. They go. understand you have to put you what I mean? families. I gotta put them. them to the side to right. put you know, well now I don't consider you a stranger because we've been talking, we're getting to know each other. Okay. My dad had to do the same thing. Exactly. I so understand. you went through that. You I left. understand, yes. So for me to for us to go out there, part life I don't you know, rest, take rest and be able to bring closure and happiness and reunion. Right. And a second chance and opportunity for a family to redo their life and be able to reconstruct that life together or even move on for whatever hiccup or whatever problem they're having okay I understand living with your parent you being probably the only child and your parent not having a partner or anything like that it gets frustrated okay my dad lives with me okay and sometimes I call it, I need some me time. So what, what do I do? I need to call my brother. I say, hey bro, I need for you to come over to the house. I don't want to bother your house. I need for you to come to the house. You need to give me a couple hours. I need to breathe. I need to go out of the house with my wife and my two kids and be able just to have some family time, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and let dad watch his what he loves, Fox News. You understand what I mean? I and, 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 and I understand that it's difficult to live sometimes because, you know, from whatever generation they're from, they were raised differently. Right. Whatever generation you and me were born at is completely different. You understand yeah. what I mean? You know, and now I bet you, you you look at this new generation. Continuing the same line of questioning, the detective tries to create a bond between himself and Day. When suspects feel like they have a friend or someone who is on their side, they tend to be more forthcoming. Growing up, you see, I wasn't like that when I was a kid. So this, that uh, misunderstanding, not understanding why they're being like that, and sometimes personalities, you understand what I mean? Especially when you spend so much time together. Well, see, that's why I think I'm, I'm extremely fortunate because one, my mother's allergic to cigarette smoke. So okay. I can go out back, she won't come out there if I'm smoking. Or I can say, hey mom, I need to borrow the car. Mm -hmm. I'm running over to the beach just for a couple of hours, just for me time. She'd say, here, honey, here's the keys. And, you know, it, but I mean, and I feel very fortunate about that because her and I are able to do that. Yeah, me and my dad are able to do that. So, I you mean, like me, and my, me, me, me and my dad. We never got on each other. Yeah, I, I go to basketball other. games with my dad. I go to soccer games with my dad. I go to baseball games with my dad when, when there's some um, um, spring training here. He loves that. That's his favorite time. That's his favorite sport. You understand what I mean? But there's also that breather time that you need away from each other. Because there's sometimes, you know, remember, it's very different when you live under your own roof and under your parents' roof. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, they got some rules and regulations that, you know what I mean, doesn't make no sense. Fortunately, you know? my mom didn't, she does it, we, we, she, you know, we were, yes, we were mother and daughter, and we lived under the same roof, but when it came to rules, it was, it, you know, if you're going to be gone all night, just let me know. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going to be, you know, whatever time you're going to be back, let me know. Um, and she was good with that. I mean, it didn't matter. It mm -hmm. was, or if any time I need to borrow the car and she wasn't using it, she would say, here, take it for a couple of days. You know, it wasn't. It was more of a roommate type thing because we were best friends, even though we were mother and daughter. But mom and I were so much alike, we didn't really get on each other's nerves. Gotcha. I mean, I I feel very fortunate to say that. And there's nobody else in this world that will ever be like that. And that's the reason I want her home now. So if God comes to me and tells me where he thinks mom is or if somebody tells me something about mom I don't care what time it is or what day it is 
I will call you with all the information and beg you to please go talk to him. And I don't care. It could be sound like the most ridiculous thing in the world. I would still call you. Um, have you ever run a course? Yes. Um, do you do it through the same company all the time? Enterprise. Enterprise. Yes. When was the last time you ran a car? Um, I think August. August? Uh -huh. And, um, I was going to tell you, um, and when you rent a car, um, who pays for it? I do. What? Do you use the there, was one, there was one time that uh, mom rented the car, but I gave her the money, whatever I got back. Um, but yeah, I pay for it and I use a credit card or um, a couple of times I used a prepaid card, um, but I stopped doing that only because you have to have, you know, um, and one time I used my debit card. so. But there was there was one time that mom rented a car for me and I paid her as soon as I I got back. How much was that? Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. How much was the ticket to Ohio? Um, I would have to have my phone to verify. I think it was like three hundred and something. Okay, and what's through Southwest? I'm going. Up, I'm going. No, it was on Spirit. I'm going okay. up on the um, Friday and coming back on Monday. So it's only a weekend thing that you're gonna go. Uh, right, I'm going to check everything out and then come back before I arrange to have everything. Um, and that was one of the reasons for the search because I'm not mm -hmm. taking everything. Um, I'm taking what you need. I am just taking what I need, um, and I just needed something a small, something small, and that's the reason I stopped because they had some, they have some really small ones, I, and I've seen them, but I didn't know they weren't open on Sunday, but. Since nobody came, I said I'll just deal with it later. If um, so, for example, you said you're going to leave Friday, come back Monday, mm -hmm. make sure everything is settled, everything is good. To try to, when were you planning to actually do the big move, like actually just go and? I was going to make that decision once I got up there. When you when you're scheduled again to start working over there? That is whenever I get up there is when they're going to give me my official start date. Abruptly, the detective switches back to asking questions related to the case. Dave follows along with the shift in conversation and almost immediately has her emotions under control, as if she had never been upset. The change is unnaturally fast, and it gives the impression that her distress wasn't genuine. So I... Were well, you going to meet your boss when you were going to go up there this um, weekend? On Monday. On Monday. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. On Saturday, 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 Saturday. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. That's the reason we're talking. That way we can clarify things, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, because I mean, I mean, because originally I was supposed to meet him on Monday, but the flight back, lead, I have to leave there at like 7 o'clock, and I get back at like 10 something in the morning. So, and originally the flight didn't leave until later. Gotcha. So we bumped the meeting back. So. And I wanted to look at everything, go over everything, and make sure that that was what was going to be best for me. And at this point, unless mom is staying in that house on Thursday, I know they didn't go. I just, I can't. I can't go until my mother is standing back in the house. Gotcha. I wouldn't even go either, you know what I mean? You're the first person who's told me that. Everybody, all the other deputies, detectives, my sister has said, go, there's nothing here. Hell no. Well, what they've told me, my sister. How will not go? My sister's exact words for me is, there is nothing you can do here that, that, that you can't do in Ohio. Still, you know, you got, you got, you know, in this way I see it. I don't know you see it the same way. Well, here, this is what I see. You got some big decisions to make when you get up there. And if you're not completely clear in your mind, 100%, you cannot make those decisions because those decisions are going to change kind of your life. 
if you're looking for a new career, I would be when you don't relocate, okay, exactly, you need to concentrate and can be completely different. So I don't blame you, you don't want to go. But she's telling me there's nothing I could do here that I can't do in Ohio, that I'm exactly the same distance apart. Uh, well, that's the, the reason, objectives that's are reason, saying I should go up the there because why. I need to concentrate on work. That's the reason why I tell you, Amy. You make your own decisions. You forget about everybody else. I, Amy I makes did. a decision for Amy. And, and I, nobody cannot obligate nobody to do anything that they don't want. If Amy wants to stay because the situation is going on and your primary, your primary mission right now is to get mom home, right. you stay. You want to stay. Exactly. And I told Judy, I can't leave. I mean, Judy, I said, and I told her, I said, Judy, I can't leave not knowing what's going on with mom. And she goes, yes, you can. You just need to go. And I'm like, how can you say that? It's your mother. And I walked in the house and I'm like, there's no way I can do that. Mm -hmm. I can't go. Not until my mother is staying in that house. I don't care if it work would do me good. I'm not gonna be able to concentrate until I know exactly that my mother's in that house, she's okay. And I can reach out and touch her. I'm not, I, I can't, I'm not going. That's my decision. And it's in their subject. I don't care what anybody else tells me. That's my feeling and that's my mom. And you're the first person who's actually agreed with me. Everybody else has told me I'm wrong. And I, don't understand how people can say that. You forget about people. Don't, 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 don't pay attention to what people say. About people's opinions, okay? <laughs> Just don't pay attention to that. Let me step out. Let me give you some tissues, okay? All right, be right back. Okay. That's, all, that's the best I can find. Right. The girls, the girls can't store them. They can buy the other, mm. the other nice fancy tissue. Oh, sorry. I don't care. You okay? I just feel like I got a couple more questions for you, real quick. Okay. You said when was the last time you, you ran out a car for Enterprise? When was that? I was in August. In August? What kind of car was it? Um, I would have to look at my phone. I have a, I can look. Do you remember the color at least? No. It was a big, small, four door, two door, sporty. Four door, four door it may have been um, silver. Okay. Like a, um, uh... Day's ability to shift between the role of a distraught inconsolable daughter and someone chatting over coffee is becoming more and more pronounced. She can break down in tears almost instantly, but the minute she begins answering questions, they dry up and her voice is steady. Still, doing so takes concentration and energy, and it is difficult to keep up for prolonged periods of time. If he keeps pushing, the detective might be able to make her slip up. That part of it is I love this car. Um, I would have to look at my phone. Okay. It, it, it would tell me. I think it was silver. Remember how much you paid for that? Um, not on the top of my head, no. Okay. It, it would tell me on my. I can look and it would tell what, me. What credit card are you used to the to to the one? Mine. Yours. Okay. Okay. No, we did. Uh, silver one may have been the one that mom did, and I did it for three days, and that's when I gave it $200. Okay. Before that, it was also in August, I paid for. That one, I, I don't know if it was silver or if it was black and silver. Okay. Same style car, um, same exact car, just different colors. Okay. How many credit cards do your mom has? Uh, um, Right. And which companies are those uh, credit card companies? Um, GM, which um, 
is like uh, Capital One, I believe. Okay. Um, Up Promise, and I'm not exactly sure who they're through. Um, and she has one in her name, and I have one in my name. We both do. And um, we both had the same PIN number on both of them. And then she has her CFE Platinum. And those are the only three I know about. So those accounts that you have, uh, you, that she has one, her name, the other one has your name on it. Mm -hmm. Who's the primary account holder? She is. She is. So mm -hmm. she gives you one with your name on it as a, like a permission for you to use that one. Yeah, I okay. can use it and I pay for what I use. She pays for what she uses, I pay for what I use. Okay. When was the last time you used one of her credit cards to buy anything? Um... Four. Wait a minute. Um, is this September? Mm -hmm. June, July. Okay. What you purchase? Um, Let me ask you. It was I used the GM car and it was a rental car. Right, fall off of the rental car. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is, is your mom like into? technology and stuff like that? Mom. She tries to be and I try to help her with it. Okay. Not very tech savvy, but she tries. Okay. Does your mom have an email account? Yes, she has two. Two? Um, Which ones are those? Um, she has... Um, what are the email addresses? There's uh, tayhawk10 at aol.com. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry, T A Y. T A Y. H A W K. H A W K. One zero. One zero? Uh huh. At AOL.com. Uh, AOL.com. Mm -hmm. And then for um, the other one, it's Tayhawk uh -huh. 11. Yeah, we'll say Tayhawk 11. Mm -hmm. At Yahoo.com. Okay. Yahoo.com. Do you yeah. got access to those emails? That the Yahoo one is on my phone because okay. that's the, what she sets up for for the GM um, and the up. So it comes to me. I don't have access to her AOL one. Okay. But because we shared the two cards is the reason I have that on my phone. Okay. And that way when I get an email, I let her know. Okay. But normally when I get an email, because I put a charge. So... But if I didn't, I tell her, hey, mom, you, you know. But the AOL one, I, that's her, that, that's all on her. Um. Day and her mother had an unusual financial arrangement. Day has more access to her mother's money than what would be considered normal outside of a health reason she might need to take over the accounts, such as dementia. It also raises the question of why, if Day can use these cards, does her mother sometimes give her large amounts of money? What can you tell me about, does there be any recent purchases by your mom that you know of? Um, because th th there's some things that I need for you to help me explain and understand, okay? I know she bought some stuff from um, Walmart. Okay, do you know those things? That she bought? That she bought? Um, I know she bought a uh, full-length mirror. Mm -hmm. Uh, TV. Okay. Um, and because of the she, the TV in her TV room is going out, and I think she bought some jewelry. Okay. How big was the TV that she bought? She bought a big boy. I don't know exactly how big, but I know she was it, bigger than mine. So. What credit card she used to, to pay for that one? I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to guess Walmart. Do you remember how much was the whole bill? No. I didn't ask her. Did she tell you why she needed those things? No. Did she tell you exactly what kind of jewelry she bought? Other than just, you know, like 
earrings and necklaces because she wanted stuff, some stuff to wear to go with, you know, church stuff and, you know, different things like that. She was tired of not having, you know, different things to wear. I mean, I can't say anything about that. Everybody deserves to feel pretty. What will you say if I believe that your mom were not, was not the one that did those purchases? That my, I believe the person that made those purchases was you. Your mom find out that you were making those purchases and she didn't like it. Why would I make the purchases? I don't know. You have access to the account. You got access to the emails. I don't have access. I just don't see a 79-year-old woman buying a 50-inch TV. I have a 42-inch TV. I don't need a 50-inch TV. Okay. Understand? And I think she got upset at you. Those are not my purchases. I don't need the jewelry. I've got plenty of jewelry. Mm -hmm. I don't need the jewelry. I don't need a 50 inch TV. Okay. And I don't need a full length mirror. So did she talk to you about those purchases? Did she mention anything to you? When she, she did those those purchases? Yeah, she asked me if I could help her with them. Okay. And I of course said yes. What what do you mean to help her with them? What do you mean? She was ordering them on the computer, so she wanted help with them. What computer did she use? She actually used my phone. Your phone? Yeah. So you did all the transactions on the phone? All I did was go through and she told me what she wanted and I said okay and whenever it started coming up I told her she needed to put in her numbers, you know, her, her account numbers and all this other stuff. I had her do that and when she did that I told her I said okay if you're done hit continue. I didn't watch her do it. so. You know, I just I just told her when she got done to hit continue, mm -hmm. and when she got done, she said okay, and I had her. I said, "Have you reviewed the order?" She said yes. I said okay, hit continue, submit or whatever. She did, and confirmation came up, and that was it. But they it was not for me. I just helped her with it. Knowing that they will be able to find this information when they search her phone, Day heads them off by admitting that the orders were placed by her mother. It's a bold choice, but the nature and timing of the orders just doesn't feel right. Because, I mean, I'm taking my 42-inch TV with me, so I don't need a 50-inch. I don't need jewelry, and I don't need a full-length mirror. I mean, these are things that I don't need. Nor do I want it. Okay. What else did she buy? Has she made any other purchases other than that? Other than those purchases? Mm, um. Not that I'm aware of. I mean, I've got some stuff that I'm saving that I haven't bought yet um, from Walmart, but it's for betting. Okay. But and I what, haven't bought it yet, but it's good. What that's going to be then, for me. Around what time did, did you guys make those purchases? Around what that time? When? And what day? Um, Friday or Saturday? Around what time? I don't know. Was daylight still up? 
It was dark. I believe it was daylight. Okay. Before dinner, after dinner, before lunch, after lunch. Uh, I would say after lunch. I don't really. I don't wear a watch, and I don't really. Uh -huh. okay. I don't. Pay well, you got a watch on your phone. You know, it seems like you always have a lot of time on your phone. But I don't. I, my phone is. I don't always have. My phone is normally dark. Well, well, you say, it sounds like you're always on the phone, you know, you, you use your phone a lot. I do, it, but it, I don't it, 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 just the thing I don't understand, it's like mind. she has a perfectly capable computer at her house. And then you guys use your phone yeah. to make such a big purchase. We've done that before. I mean, it's we've sit in her TV room and do links, a, a lot of different things on my phone. She likes my phone. I mean, it's nothing unusual. It's faster than the one that's in there because she hates how slow it is. And it's, it's nothing unusual about it. Anytime I make purchases, I use my phone. How about the laptop? Her laptop. I don't. Judy bought her that laptop. I I actually thought she had it with her because she's normally in the TV room, and the detective is the one who found it underneath her bed. I did, I didn't know that it was there at the house. I thought she had it with her, but that's something that Judy bought her. I didn't. I don't have anything to do with the laptop. Okay. I know she doesn't like the laptop because it has Windows 8 on it, and she hates Windows 8. She refuses to use it. So she has like an iPad or a tablet, anything like that? Um, she has, it was a little one, an iPad. Okay. Yeah. Um, she has one of those. It was also with the laptop, which I thought she had with her. Because that's normally in her TV room. That's the reason I thought she had it with her. But he found it under her bed. But I, again, that's something that she does. Okay. And I think that's just mainly got like books and solitaire or yeah, gotcha. stuff like that in there. She knows how to use that pretty good? On yeah. stands it pretty good? No, no. No. She even needs all like to turn her on? She, she, doesn't, she doesn't like turning either one of them on. Oh, wow. Gotcha. I mean, she hates Windows 8 that much. Um, I don't think I've seen her use the laptop and... Wow. And the iPad, or did you about her? I haven't seen her use that since probably the beginning of the year. She just doesn't, she doesn't like it. I mean, and she's not going to tell any Judy, she's not going to tell Judy her feelings. I did think she did take it with her, but... You've been completely sincere with me this whole time? Yes, sir. I know we cleared up some stuff that was kind of cloudy before. Yes, sir. I am. And you put it on the table. Yes, sir. I am. Okay. And you swore that everything you had told me has been the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. You swear? I swear. Okay. Hand to God. If I can help my mom, technically, I always have. I try to teach her. I write stuff down for her. But when she gets overwhelmed, I'm like, Mom, here, just let me do it. You tell me. But when it comes to the numbers and stuff like that, you need to put this, 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 and this in. Day is oversharing and there is an important inconsistency. If her mother uses Day's phone because she hates her laptop and never uses it, then why did Day assume she took the laptop with her? And just hit continue or submit whatever it says. And then it, we go from there. And then that's it. And then I keep her updated. But there is no jewelry I need. I do not need a full-length mirror. 
and I have absolutely no use for a 50 inch TV when I have a 42 inch TV that I'm taking with me. Did you guys pick that up already? You guys from, no. got delivered to the house already or? She requested for it to be delivered. Why didn't want to guess there? Do you know? I don't know what date she picked. I'm going to throw something at you right now. I'm going to share this with you, okay? Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think happened to your mom? I don't know. You think she's with Rose? I want to believe she is, yes. Okay. You said you, that you want to believe that she's with Rose, so that means that you don't believe she's with Rose. Why do you think right now all of that you, you want to believe that she's with Rose? I want to believe with Rose because if she's with Rose, then she's okay. If she's not with Rose, then my fear is... What's your fear? She's not okay. And I don't want to think that. In what way that she's not okay? Somebody's hurt her. Somebody is hurting her. Somebody is holding her and not letting her go. I don't know. Because she's not going to believe she's with Rose and she's okay. And that y'all are going to bring her home. I don't want to think of the other things. It's too hard for me to think of the other things. I want to have faith that I want to believe that she's with Rose and y'all are going to find her and bring her home safely. And stand her in our living room so me and my sister can go, you scared the hell out of us. Don't ever do it again. That's well, I don't believe. I don't want to believe anything else. If I believe anything else, I'll curl up into a ball and never stop crying. That's why I want to believe. You don't know where your mama's at right now. Yeah, I have no idea. Then. You know you will tell me, right? Yes. If I even had a clue or hint or a, anything, I would tell you in part. I would ask you to send everybody to go get them. They have absolutely no idea. I wish I did. Well, would you find your mom? She's been at the house the whole time. My mom's been at the house the whole time. The detective reveals the fate of Aura Hawkins in three, two, one. Your mom been at the house this whole time. And she's dead. She's, she passed. No, 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 no. Day's mother has been dead the entire time. <laughs> she's been in the backyard the whole time. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Day is confronted with the truth of her mother's death. The body was discovered buried in the yard. The grave marked by plastic flowers. Day breaks down as if she cannot believe the news, but her concern for herself most likely outweighs the remorse for killing her mother.
No, 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 no. in the backyard. No, 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 no. She was bare in the backyard the whole time. No, no, no. And flowers placed on top of her. No. No. There's no reason for me to lie to you, Amy. No. I'm telling you the truth. We're in the backyard. Your mom. Your mom. Mm -hmm. Is passed. Mm -hmm. Died. Is dead. No. And was buried in the backyard of her own house. No. And then they put. Flowers, not like just natural flowers, fake plastic flowers <laughs> on top of her with fresh soil to make it seem that it was a nice, beautiful garden. <laughs> Who will do that, something like that, to this sweet old lady? Hmm? Who will do that to her? <laughs> she only served it. No, she didn't. I don't know. Hmm? I don't know. She didn't deserve that. My mother was a Christian woman. She's a good woman. She did not deserve that. Trying to figure out. She was buried. She was buried. And they put flowers on top. The detective allows the silence to become long and uncomfortable. Day tries to act like she believes someone else did this, but the odds of a stranger murdering someone, burying them in their own yard, and placing flowers over the grave are pretty much non-existent. I need your help and understand. I'm trying to understand myself. That's the reason why I'm trying to get talk to you. For you to be able to tell me without holding anything back and be completely truthful and tell, to figure out what, you, what happened to your mom. What's the reason why 
this happened to your mom? I don't know of any reason why this would happen to my mother. My mother has never done anything to anybody for them to do that. I know you've never met my mother, but she has never done anything to anybody for them to do that to her. She is a decent, good Christian woman that would give you her shirt off of her back. There is nothing she wouldn't do for her friends. My mother didn't deserve that, and there is nobody that I know that would do that to her, or would have any reason to do that to her. I don't, she's never made, I don't know anybody she's made mad. I don't know. I don't know. Now you understand why it was so important for me to confirm and reconfirm where you've been, who you were with, stuff like that. You thought I did that to my mom. I'm not saying that you that you did it to your mom. It just this how severe this investigation, how deep just got into right now. I'm trying to cover all my tracks. Every entrance, every exit, every window, every crack, everything on this investigation. You understand what I mean? And that's the reason why I'm asking you to be truthful, completely truthful with me and tell me where you were, who you were with, you know, what time was this, what time was that. I understand. They just went from a missing person investigation to a homicide, to a murder. This one from uh, another human being taking the life of another human being. A homicide, a murder. My mother has never done anything to deserve to be anymore. She's a nobody but a kid. Where's the bank card that you used yesterday to withdraw the money? Car has your mom's name on it. Mm -hmm. Have you ever taken money from your mom? No. Never. Have you ever taken advantage of your mom? Income, situation, knowing that your mom, you know, loves you very much, um, babies you. A little bit more than your other siblings, and you used that to take advantage of her. Because yeah. for me, I know me growing up, you know, I knew I knew what kind of face and what kind of excuse to tell my parents yeah. for them to buy me stuff. You guys are arguing about money? Mm -hmm. about, fin about finances? No. 
you seen mom, you spending too much money. Amy, you spending too much money. Yeah. As soon as the detective begins questioning her, Day is able to shut the tears off. For someone who has supposedly just learned that her mother was buried in the yard, she isn't asking very many questions of her own about what happened. person took out the time and energy to hurt an innocent older female who loves her daughter very much, her daughters. I know she loved her other daughter. Okay. How many kids she has total? How many? Two. Two. Who loves bored little girls very much, will do whatever she can for her daughters, and this is the way that her life ended. I don't know. Hurt and buried in her own backyard. And then put soil on, and then fake flowers. And really, damn, and somebody really thought this through. But then the thing is that they thought, they thought it through, but then just, just forgot a couple of little details. See, that person thought that, she, that he or she thought everything, but left a couple of details out. Well, that's a good thing, right? Mm-hmm, very good thing. Because that's when the, the, the forensic part opens up, you know, the evidence part opens up. Right. You know, we'll be able to put everything together right. and put that puzzle together. Right. Then. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Very good thing. But I don't know anybody that would do that. And I'm certain my mother doesn't know anybody who would do that. Just trying to figure this out. <clears throat> you know, that's what, that's what we're trying to do. I Stand, if he sees a, a man yell at a woman, there is absolutely no way, no. Not possible. I wouldn't be around to my life. Day claims that she doesn't know of anyone who would harm her mother. She also denies having any arguments over money, but she doesn't realize that her mother has told a very different story to her sister. Going 
going back to the purchases at Walmart. You stated that you helped your mom purchase those things to do the, the transaction online. You, you say that you that she wanted you to she wanted the items to come to the house, be delivered to the house. You said, yes. okay, but you have no idea when they're gonna get there. Why is your phone showing that you, that you've been tracking the packages? I haven't been tracking the packages. You have my phone. You have my phone since yesterday. Okay. How how could I be tracking the packages? I don't know. That's what your phone's showing. I, I there's no way for me to track the packages. You have my phone. I can't track those packages. Not if you got it. I haven't been in the house. You've got my phone. There's no way for me to track the packages. I, mean, does that uh, make I, sense? I, I just give you the facts while your phone shows. You understand okay, what I mean? But, but I, mean, I just give you the facts of what your phone shows. Does that make sense? You understand what I mean? No, that, I, I'm just saying. I, I'm just giving you the facts I understand. of what, what your phone shows. That's all. I know, but what, you know? My shown is, what my phone is showing is I've been tracking the packages. You've had my phone. I have not been allowed in my house. I haven't had my phone. I still don't have my phone. The tracking shows that the last time your phone went into the website, or tracking the packages was on the 20th before law enforcement was contacted? No. Okay. I'm, again, I'm just giving you the facts. Okay. Or what your phone states. Okay, but no. You understand what I mean? It just. I, I, I understand. I'm going based on what your phone says. I, I, I understand, but no. Okay. I can tell you flat out. No. There was no reason for me to track them. Unless she asked me to. And obviously she didn't. So I would have no reason to track the packages. They weren't mine. It's so weird. It was the last phone call. Oh, actually, somebody heard your mom was at 8 o'clock on Saturday, which that was the 19th. And then, somehow, nobody had heard from your mom since Saturday night. And then, all of a sudden, mysteriously, your phone shows that somebody mysteriously track the package that or the order that your mom made either Friday or Saturday that you said that she that you helped her with that purchase. And like you just said right now that you only will track the package if your mom will ask you to do it. Am I right or wrong? You Is that accurate? Is, well that's not accurate. Wait a minute. Okay, so you're saying that my phone is showing that package was Everything on phones shows a, a timestamp. What no, I say I, is day I, I and time. I understand that part. Okay, the timestamp that shows the last person that went into a web, the website tracking, trying to track the package was on the 20th. It shows the time before law enforcement was contacted. So that was before we made contact with you and your sister. That was not me. I can tell you that was not me. Arguing with the evidence isn't getting day anywhere but she doesn't grasp that her safest option would be to remain silent. This choice works best for the detective because it shows that Day has no remorse and continued to lie. And then right before that, you know, right now, you know, you say that you will not track it, you'll not be tracking the packet on your own unless your mom will ask you to do it. Right, that's how I know it was not me. She made the order. And Amy. that was... Amy, 
I know what you're saying. Let's be sincere know. with each other. I, Listen to me. Bottom line right now. Bottom line right now, Amy. Right now, Amy. Your mother was murdered. And I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. I know that. I'm asking you some simple question that I got the facts to follow to be able to sustain it. And you're still lying to me. I'm not lying. I have How about a simple question. I have not tracked the package. Did I go on Walmart's website? Maybe. But did I track the package? No. I could have gone on Walmart's website. It's not unusual for me to do that. But did I track the package? No. Your mom was murdered in her own house. Wrapped up in garbage bags. And buried in the back yard. I don't need to know this. And then... They, took a they were decent about it to put soil, fresh soil, and then put some flowers on it, on her grave. The person who did that has more than enough time to do and plan this. The person who did it had a reason why to do it. Your mom wasn't picked randomly. She was targeted. And the person who committed this knew your mother. And your mother knew that person. Your mother found something out about that person and confronted that person. And this is what happened. This is the result of that confrontation. That person knows that time is on their side and took their time to clean everything up. Rock your mom, your mom's body in plastic garbage bags go to the backyard dig a hole please drag your mom's body stop to that hole please stop and bury her <sighs> and probably out of respect Let's put some fresh soil on it and some and some fake flowers, some plastic flowers on. Please Amy, stop. you gotta talk to me, Amy. You I, have to talk to me, Amy. I didn't have anything to do with that. You have to talk to me, Amy. I'm talking to you. I did not have anything to do with you that. You need to stop talking. You need to stop lying. You need to stop telling me everything that you know. And you mean to be completely honest with me for the sake of your mother, Amy. For the sake of your mom. Now is the time, Amy, that you know that mom is not going to come back home. You have an opportunity to stop being honest with me and fix things up and be completely honest with me for us to be able to do our job. That's the only thing I can tell you, huh, Amy. That's the only thing I can say. I don't know anything about any of that. Everything is closing in on day. She is uncomfortable hearing about the details of her mother's death. Doing so makes it harder to emotionally distance herself from the act. Burying her mother and placing the flowers brought her a sense of closure, and the detective is ripping that away from her. I don't know anybody who would do that. 
I certainly wouldn't do that, especially to my own mother. Now people sit in this same chair. I know. Telling me the same thing. I know. Me. I know. And you can't even be sincere with me about some other questions that I have asked you. I had to give and more and more and put more on the table for me to be able to get it out from you. I had nothing to do with what happened to my mother. I don't know anybody that would do that to my mother. I do not have confrontation with my mother. I would benefit none from this. At all. You got access to her bank account. You got access to her financial situation. Credit cards, bank accounts. If she's dead, no I do not. My sister does. My sister has control over everything. Well, you took out money. With her permission. Took $2,500, paid for the higher trip. Took, I don't know, another $600 two times through the year, another $400. That she gave me. You know what I mean? She gave me that. Now you're sitting me here that your, your sister is the one that got all the benefits of it? She takes, she has the, and according to what mom has set up, Judy does the financial power of attorney, all that stuff. Not me. Interesting. Very interesting. But I had absolutely nothing to do with what happened to my mom. Very interesting. Why is that interesting? Just just look at all, all, the, all, all the money spent this last week. All the money spent on this last week. Money taken out of our account on, Friday, on, on, on Sunday, which I had to confront you about it because you would not tell me about that. You told me from the beginning that you went from the house to Westgate to me, whatever her name is, and come back straight home. And I told you why. Yeah, I know, I know. And I had her permission to do it. But then after that, then, you know, you finally came out, then you left the house, made a ride on 192, made a U-turn, stopped in front of the junkyard, talked to Marie, for I don't know how long, then you went to the bank, then when you went to the old storage place, then you went to talk well, to the lady, or something State. like that. And, and then came come back home. It's not. You have control over her finances. You have uh, control over email. You have control over credit card. You have control over debit card. You have control over bank, checks. You name it. You had an open book of your mom. Finances. I didn't have control over her checking. I mean, her checks or. Her I don't have her credit cards. GM up, they'll be canceled. So I don't know where you think I have control. Before you went to Gainesville on Saturday, do you stop at any gas station? No. Here in town, in St. Cloud, mm -hmm. Kissimmee? Mm -hmm. I'm not lying to you. I'm not. Day is quick to walk back her earlier statements about the access she had to her mother's credit cards. She now says all the money is under the control of her sister.
There's some stuff in your story, Amy, I'm going to be completely sincere with you, that is still a little bit cloudy and fuzzy to me. Okay. Jess? Tell me what's cloudy and fuzzy. There's no reason from the beginning for you to hide all those things from me. I've been throwing you, the whole time we've been sitting here today, I've been throwing you facts at you to try to confirm where you've been, where you haven't been. And when I give you almost the whole thing, that's when you go, Kling. oh, that's right, yeah, I stopped at that place. Stop at that place. Yeah, I did this, I did that. How do you think that made me feel? What do you think makes me feel, you know, questioning myself? I want to trust Amy, I want to believe her, but I can't. It sounds in your mind. And then I get hit. It feels like a baseball bat right to my chest while they found the house. Outside, smoked a cigarette, and I was standing there, and I had no idea she was there. How do you think that makes me feel? I don't know. You tell me. I'm being completely open. Her, I was standing here smoking a cigarette, and I had no idea that my mother was in the backyard that buried. And then I went inside, laid down, and took a nap while my mother was laying in the backyard buried. Ron, what, what time was that that your sister left? Do we have to ask her? I don't know. How long do you... you 12.30. Me. How, how long did your sister stay out of the house? Um, From the time she got home? Joy was supposed to call at noon, um, by 12.15, she hadn't, so my sister left between 12.15 and 12.30. After she left, I stepped out and smoked a cigarette, went back inside, changed clothes, and lay down, watch 10, 15 minutes of TV, and fell asleep, and woke up to Judy hollering my name with a law enforcement officer. And I didn't even look at what the clock said. I just jumped up real quick. I thought they had found Mom. That was my first thought that they had located her. Again, who would do something like this? That's the question everybody's asking. Maybe. An animal? A sadistic animal? Somebody you think that has some Psychological, some problems or some emotional problems, you think? Good. To this I don't know what people. Can, I pe don't know what a person thinks or what goes to their, their mind when they do something like that. Based on my training experience, Amy. As a law enforcement officer, as a police officer, in every situation where somebody gets hurt, 
where somebody argue, argue or somebody fights. There's always three sides of each story. It takes two people for something, most of the things happen. Then you got one story that belongs to him or her, then another story that belongs to the other side, and right in the middle when something happened, which the middle one is the real one. And that if there's any other witnesses or any video to prove, the only person that knows is God. You understand what I mean? Yes. And in life, everybody makes mistakes. We're human beings. We're not perfect. Where is one mistake? You understand what I mean? Well, there's some things in life, emotionally and mentally, that takes over. That blinds people. Follow either argument or disagreement. Although she is confronted with the inconsistencies in her story, Day refuses to admit her guilt. The detective suggests that whoever did this had some sort of mental problem. This is directed specifically at Day, who has not only dealt with addiction in the past, but recently her behavior has become increasingly more strange and erratic. You know, somebody getting caught doing something that they're not, they're not supposed to be doing to be on somebody else's back, somebody got jealous, somebody, you know, that, that heat of the moment, somebody do bump into somebody else or something that will take that person to the edge for that person to take those horrible actions and hurt a human being, which sometimes end up in taking that person's life. The good thing about life is that life always gives you a second chance. And God always forgives. And it's up to that person to take that opportunity to make things right, to clear their mind, clear their conscience, and take that evil or whatever thing inside that is carrying them out, holding them back from keep moving forward to be happy with life. However, that person needs to make that decision needs to take that road to stand up and say, here's what really happened. We got into, we got into it, it was an argument, stuff like that, I lost it. Blah, 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 blah. You understand what I mean? Then when I noticed, I freaked out. Based on my training experience, always ends up like that, most of the times. It's up to that person to take a stand Make that decision to come out with the truth. Now, I'll tell you this right now. I have seen the change in people, the relief. They feel forgiven. Not, yet, not, not just by just God, by the person they hurt, by the family members. But if that person doesn't forgive themselves and take the opportunity to make things right, I think it's too late. It's too late. You got that person has one more opportunity to make things right. If that person doesn't take the opportunity, that's up to that person. But that person cannot later on turn around and say, I never had the opportunity. That person can never deny, I never had the opportunity to tell myself the story, say this is what really happened. It took me this, I got this emotion and stuff like that, it took me to the edge. Okay. The only thing I'm telling you, Amy. Is that I need for you to start being honest with me. There's still a couple blank spots that are blank that you haven't been completely truthful for with me. Which are? Where you been the whole weekend? Saturday, Chieflin. Sunday, here. Okay. Sunday night, here. Literally mm -hmm. in this building, mm -hmm. 
and at my dad's. Friday, I was at home. And you did tell me that you received phone calls from your mom on Saturday night, right? One. Okay, a phone call. And it was after what, 8, 8.30 you said? No, it was between 8.20 and 8.25. Okay. And then, what I could recall, and correct me if I'm wrong, you also stated that you attempted to call your mom. And because she tried to get in contact with her, but you said that it will say, will not ring, it will say, this, this caller doesn't have the voicemail set up and you can leave a message. Correct. Okay. And how many times you tried to call her back? Once. Once. And that was Saturday night? Yes. And once it said that, I mean, I know that my sister tried throughout the night, but if the mailbox isn't set up, it's not set up. So. The detective keeps pressing, but Day shows no sign of breaking. Unless something changes, the confession is unlikely. Okay. The only thing I could hope is that she would call. Okay. Gotcha. Alright. Right. I'm gonna step out real quick, all right? I'll be right back. Amy, what medication is that? Um, this is um, for my heart. Okay. And this is for my blood pressure. And I was supposed to pick another one up today, but I have to do it by 6 o'clock, and obviously I don't think that's going to happen. And you have it with you just because you need it, you take it as needed, or do you uh, take it at a certain time? This one is at 1, and this is at twice a day, and I have to take them at certain times. I understand. And they brought them down to me, down to my dad's house, because it was time for me to take them. Okay. So when they came by, when y'all came by, I just picked up everything and brought them with me. Okay. Because I was under the understanding that I was coming to get my phone and then going home. I understand. Some some crazy developments happened, like more than crazy. You know what the the, the issue is. I think is um, is the the lack of logic that's going into what you're saying, and 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 the the. The untruths that you told us already. That's the that's the that's the biggest problem, because when someone lies to you, especially in a circumstance like like this. I know, and I corrected it with him. No, you 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 corrected. Yeah, sure, but you got a. That looks like you're hiding I know, something. I know. And. And I'm not. Well, let me tell you. And I know it looks like it, and it looks bad. This is, I just want to tell you the way I see it, okay? Um, You've always been the blunt one. I, and I have that reputation. That, and it's, that's fine. It's I, all, I, I, I don't, it's all I, me coming out, though. It, no, I like blunt, so okay. please. Friday, um, the 18th, um, you make a call to your mom. Um, late at night, about 11 p.m., it doesn't appear that there's any talking going on, but you call her number from your phone. On the 18th? On Friday, the 18th, late at night, probably about 11 p.m., your phone makes a phone call to your mother's phone. Okay? Cell phone? House phone? Uh, I'd have to check on that. One or the other. Um, I don't know where you were f Friday night. I was at home. Okay, so. So was she. I understand. I'm just telling you that this is Brett telling you what he's seeing, okay? Okay. That's, that's weird. Saturday, there is no communication between your phone, your mother's cell phone, or the house phone. 
See, that's what I don't understand because there All was. Right. I didn't, and I'm having trouble understanding it too because um, these, what I know from these records, I've been a detective for 20 years. All right. Now, recently, in the last 10 years, we've had the magic of cell phones, and I tell you what it is: is cell phone records are accurate. They tell you exactly what it is. It can go up into a court of law. Um, the custodian of records will come and testify and show you how accurate these records are. I've never seen them inaccurate. And this isn't your phone I'm looking at. These are the records from the phone company. I, I understand that, but okay, there, was, there, there should be a record okay. from a call from my mother and then from me to her. Should have, could have, would have, there's not. A second detective has come in and he starts off focusing on the lies concerning the calls they made. She keeps trying to place the blame on her phone, but the accuracy of phone records destroys that line of reasoning. There should be though. Okay, but there's not. This is just me, what I'm seeing, okay? Okay. okay. So we move on, um, and now it's, it's Saturday. And Saturday, a lot of what appears to be weird stuff is going on. Um, your mother buys you a plane ticket. I understand that she, she'd be more than happy to do that for you, okay? Um, we got a ton of purchases online. Um, we got a wire transaction um, for $2,500 from your mother's account to yours. Not wire transaction, check, but okay. but, You know what I'm saying, Electronical, electronic transaction. Mobile first. deposit. Right. Um, so we're, we're talking almost like five grand in one day. Okay, then you say that then, no, the twenty-five that went into my account was for me. I understand that. I'm just talking amounts of money but added the up. The purchases that that was with my mother's. I'm telling you how we're looking at it because it's coming from your phone. This is what Brett's seeing. That's all I'm telling you. Okay, but she had me. I I heard the whole thing. Okay, I know, I've heard you explain it before. I don't okay. want to explain myself. Now. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. So we have all that money that, that's shifted hands, this is what I'm seeing, on Saturday. Now you say that Carrie and you call one another. Mm -hmm. um, I'd have to look at the records, but I don't see that call anywhere. I don't know when you made the plans. I don't know. It sounded kind of spontaneous that you guys decided. Yeah. So that when I'm thinking around 3, 2, 3 o'clock, you guys decided you were going to get together because you said you were out of the house by five. Yes. Okay. So I'm thinking about at least. He would have had to. After he noon. left at three in order to be there by five. Right. So I don't see that communication, and I'll have to double check that one because I don't. I don't remember seeing that. Then you tell me last night the route that you guys always take. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have a GPS that's still in your purse. He has a GPS. And the way that the, 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 the uh, not the GPS, a, a, uh, uh, not a, GPS, a, uh, a transponder, a, uh, a e pass. I didn't take it with me. You, but this is, I'm going to get to that. Okay. You have an e pass, and Carrie has an e pass. Mm -hmm. So, you guys, as far as you say, you go up the turnpike, and let's just stop there. You guys go up the turnpike. You say that he goes through one transponder. One, one area, and then he pays for the rest, mm -hmm. okay? Um, what I know about the turnpike is that no matter if you go under there or you go into the stall to pay, there's they, still they a reader attack. there. There's right. a reader at everywhere you go. They take with your attack. And we're not getting any of that from your e-pass or his. Now, I say yours because your e-pass is still in your purse inside the house. Okay. I put it back in there, but I took it okay. out. <laughs> That's what doesn't make sense to me. Um, that you have, you got home, and this is where one of the lies comes in. You tell us you got home at eleven, but then you said you got home earlier than that. For some reason, you decided okay. not to tell us the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's. What is the truth to that statement? What time did you get home? Nine in the morning. So you left. At you seven. both left at 7 o'clock. Yeah. You get here. Does he get out and go in the house? No. He drops you off. Yeah. You immediately go inside. Is your mom there? No. Okay. Your mom's not there. You say that the keys are inside the home. 
that you don't have keys to the car that your mom has the keys and you find the spare keys inside the home is that right the spare key was on the counter in right. the kitchen so you would but i had to go through the gate right into the back door so the, the house. house is locked up yeah and i went through the gate i opened it mm -hmm. i have a key to the house and that's important that the house is locked up yeah i'm going to get to that in a minute and i saw th there was a key there okay I let me continue down and you immediately get on the phone um you know the cars there mm -hmm. you know your mom's not there you have this and i'm going to call it a suspicious phone call that your mom gives you apparently that's not on the record and she tells you something that she's going to california to console a woman who's, whose husband just died and she's that driving was saturday okay but what i'm saying is you come into the empty house knowing that that occurred the night before yeah okay without giving day time to recover from the phone records the detective moves on to the oddities about the timeline she has given Day isn't as confident as she was in the beginning and is stumbling to keep up. And the first thing you do is you call up Tasha for some cigarettes instead of wondering where your mom's at. So you get in the car, you drive, this is what you tell us first of all, and you do the, tr the cigarette transaction. Well, I had text Tasha. I understand. This is just what I'm seeing, okay? You, you go. And, and you say you trade the cigarettes, and I come right back. This is what, what your first story is, okay? Mm -hmm. Then we start getting acts. Uh, 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 we're, we start getting facts, and, and we start understanding situations. And, and now we're looking at it, and we're now we're looking at it, going, "What is going on here?" And okay? I changed my story. So now we have your mother. Somebody's spending your mother's money on Saturday. Now we we have a couple tr uh, um, purchases on Sunday. Who we find out is you not purchases but a withdrawal from a bank a along with other purchases as well i might add um and we have you with your mother's card withdrawing four hundred dollars from the bank did i have permission from i from how how do you have permission your mom's not even there i had got permission from her she gave it to me on friday she that doesn't make sense well it may you not got you got permission to use it sunday here's my card i'm going to be leaving unexpectedly so here's my card she gave it to me on friday she said you can withdraw four hundred dollars that doesn't make I sense i didn't know she was leaving on saturday okay i'm just telling you how i feel and i i understand that but she said here's I, my card I, that does not make sense and not only she gives you the card to hold, she doesn't think she's going anywhere. She gets this emergency. I don't know that. Okay. Well, she gets an emergency situation where you said, well, she kind of sounded like a little, maybe she was upset. And then she bolts to, she bolts to Colorado within, within minutes because your sister runs to the, the, the house and there's no one there. Right. Okay. Then you say, okay, I lied about when I got home. I still don't understand why you did that. Uh, I, I did hear that you didn't want to look like um, a bad person, you didn't want to do that, but if she gave you permission to get $400 out of the bank, how is that gonna make you look like a bad person? You don't even talk to your sister. You don't talk to your father. Who is gonna call you a bad person for that? Now this makes me think, Amy. This makes me think. There's I some. I talk to my dad. There, you barely talk to your dad. Is is it every day? Not every day. Okay. But... How is he going to know you got four hundred dollars out of the bank? And why would he care? Your mother gave you permission. You know what that makes me think? They think like, there's so, there's something going on here that I don't understand. I still don't understand it. But we're going to get to that. Okay. You go to the bank. Did you go to a gas station somewhere and get something? Either the day, I think it was on Saturday. I think it was in the morning. Maybe around, I made it Monday. Any day Saturday, did you go to the gas station? Did you get no. gas, make no. a purchase, anything? No, I did not drive the car on Saturday. Okay, because we're someone's giving us that there was there was a different purchase made. Now I haven't got the video on that yet, but that's okay, coming. I didn't drive a car on Saturday. Okay. 
You didn't drive the cart all on Saturday. No. So then, let's move on. It's Sunday. Um, you're home now. You've been home since 9 o'clock. Your mother's not there. Your sister calls you and say, no. are you home yet? No. You call your sister and you say, I will call you when I get home? Yes. And this was at, we can get the time off the report, but this is... Um, I call her or I text her. You text her, that's fine. Uh, you communicate with her and say, I'll call you when I'm near the house, 15 minutes from the house. But you were already home. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is another thing I'm thinking. Okay, this is kind of strange. Maybe it's not for you, but it would be for me. So then, she never gets a call. She pulls up in the driveway, and you come walking out of the house. No, I did call her and say, I, I did call her. Okay. And say, and told her that I'm, I'm almost there. I'm telling you what I'm, what I'm looking at, because that's not the story I got. I mean, you, you gotta remember, I've talked to way more people than you. Unlike the first detective, this one speaks more rapidly and doesn't give Day time to think. He's more direct about accusing her of lying, and the shift in speed and tone continues to throw Day off. It makes it harder for her to make up lies to try and stay ahead of the questioning. Okay, okay so, so there's did, a difference between your story and other people's story. Okay, but on my phone it should show that I called her. Okay, I can double check, that's fine. And right. said, yes, and then yeah, I did. But according to you, we can't trust your phone or the report. But so, I did call. So then. You can trust her phone. So that. I trust all the reports, believe me. Mm -hmm. So then. I don't. Well, of course you don't, because it's making you out to be a bandit right now. No, I don't trust them because there's things missing that I know should be there. We've already established that these reports have made you give us some more truths. That you were lying for no reason, unless I can think of, is you're trying to hide something. I'm not. Now I'm going to get into some the, the terrible thing that occurred. Um, we we have a dead body. Please don't. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to get into into specifics. Okay. He, um, he, I don't. He's I don't. Already, I'm assuming that it's your your relative, your mother. Okay. He's already told me. I know. I'm not going to get into details, but this is what I want to say. Um, a person who breaks into a home, and I, and I don't know if this is what you're thinking or not, a person that breaks into a home and commits a horrible act doesn't clean up like that and then not do anything for advancement. Not only that, they don't make it look like your mother left to go somewhere. That doesn't happen. I can tell you in 10 years of homicide with every, every presentation I've ever gone to, that doesn't happen. Unless it was somebody close. I'm not saying, Amy, that you did anything. But what I'm saying is with everything I'm seeing, with all these facts and all this craziness going on, it makes me think that you're not giving us everything you know. And I can tell you one thing, the evidence will prevail. It will prevail. There's no getting around it. And for the person that steps into this room and lies and lies and lies and lies, and then at the end, the evidence prevails, guess what? There's no more talking. There's no more saying, this is what happened. It didn't happen like you think. There's no more of that. It's just done. Because we don't go back. We don't go back and talk. We try to reason with people. We try to give them the benefits of, of coming without everything you know. If, if you had something to do with it, if you didn't. But I tell you one thing, Amy. I know, deep down in my heart, that you're holding things back from us. You are. I'm not. I, I'm telling you, Amy, you're not going to make me believe that. You're not going to make me believe that someone entered that home and then locked up afterwards. And cleaned up afterwards. And made everything look pretty. Whether you're trying to protect somebody. No. 
whether you're trying to protect yourself, no. Well, then I don't understand why you'd be hiding all this stuff. I'm Just not that, hiding anything. It, I'm telling you, that's still way it looks, Amy. I, but I'm not hiding anything. I am not. You're not telling me everything I you know. I don't know what happened. I'm not hiding yeah. anything. I didn't do uh, anything to my mother. I didn't say you did. And I didn't clean the house. I didn't make everything look pretty. I didn't say you did. I didn't do anything. Okay, maybe you did. Tell me who did. I don't know. I wish I could. I, if I knew, I would tell you in a heartbeat. If I'm wrong about this, I'd be very surprised. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I hope you are right. But I tell you what, the evidence will prevail. It will prevail. And it's going to show that I... I, I hope so. I, I, because I would never do that. I don't, I'm not saying you would. I, but I wouldn't protect somebody who would do that. I don't I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even want to know somebody who would do that. Well, you know what, I would say the same thing. I just, In your job, you can't. No, listen, but with all these circumstances that surround this whole horrible thing, it, no, guess who's the shining star? Beyond horrible. Who is the shining star? That's you, Amy. I'm not a shining star. Day still desperately denies that she had anything to do with her mother's death, but the evidence just doesn't support her claims. The house being locked up and all signs of a struggle being removed indicates a premeditated crime rather than a break-in. I'm telling you, you're the biggest person right now. There's things you can't understand. There's things that you wouldn't understand until we had to call you out on and prove to you that that was not the way it happened. And there's going to be more. There's going to be more things that we're going to say, you know what, Amy? You had your chance. This is it. But we, we will do it that way. It doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. Because in this day and time, it makes my job easy. It really does. Okay. I didn't do anything to my mother. I don't know who did. I wouldn't know. Isn't it crazy that Carrie uses his e pass one time and then doesn't use it again on the way up and on the way back? Which we're going to get video of if it actually happened. I can't tell you why he does what he does. I know, but I'm gonna. Uh, what I'm saying is, I, I think that we're gonna. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it or not. But one of the possibilities is is that might be that might be a, a fib of some kind that you guys went went no. and paid through the. I'm just telling you. You said no before to the to the stuff that you already came out with. You said the same thing, Amy. Did you not? You said last night. You said no, no way. But today you go. Yeah. Yeah, you got me. I didn't want to look like a bad person because my mom gave me permission to get $400 out of the bank. I heard you tell Detective Guevara that you were going to bring your TV with you to Ohio. Yeah. How are you going to get it there? It's going to be at a higher U-Haul and have them load Did it. Did you call a lock service at all, a locksmith yesterday or the day before? No, I was going to. For what? I wanted to have some keys made. Okay, for who? For what? I'm just asking. Well, because I couldn't remember. I wanted Judy wanted a key, and I couldn't remember if I had another key. Okay. So I was. Did you have another key? I did find another key. That's the reason I never called them. Okay, that's fine. Then what's the storage? Are you? Are you getting a storage service of some kind? I was going to look to see about getting a small one because there are going to be certain items that I don't take. And the one there on Old Canoe Creek Road, they have really small ones, and I was trying to see how much they cost. But there are going to be some things that I don't take. I don't know what to make of this. So, I mean... That was the only reason I was looking at that. 
Nothing the sinister. Card, the card that you used to get the four hundred dollars with, you told Detective to Guevara that it was in your purse. It's not in your purse. It was. There was another. Uh, there was a American Express, I think, that belonged to your mom that was in your purse. American Express. Let's clarify that. American Express, the Leah Hawkins. Does appear to be expired, but that was in your purse. I don't know why. So you don't know where the card is for the uh, Central Florida's credit union? I thought I'd put it back in my purse. Where would it be if it wasn't in your purse? I was driving in a car. Hmm? I was driving in a car. So it might be in the car? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I. Is so that something you would normally do, is just leave it in the car? Well, no, but I mean... You would put it in your purse, right? Well, if I reached over... It Inadvertently it, dropped it? Yeah. Okay, I'll check on that. Okay. I mean, I thought I did put it back, you know, but mm -hmm. if I dropped it, I dropped it. I mean, I haven't looked for it again, so I wouldn't know. With each question, Day grows more defensive. She can't give satisfactory answers and all of the strange inconsistencies that might be meaningless by themselves are piling up. Because I haven't driven the car since. So what would you do if you were me? I don't know what to do. House wasn't broken into. Everything was locked up, you're right. The key that was, I did look for a key that was outside, mm -hmm. just not there. I don't know. It's not logical. I know I keep saying that. I know. The whole thing's not logical. Well, she used to keep a key in where the hose wraps around. There's a little door. Mm -hmm. There's a frog inside there. She always kept a key in there just in case she locked herself out, I locked myself out. Mm -hmm. I went to look, get it, because I was going to give it to my sister. It's not there. All right, that, that, that might be. But that doesn't mean my mother didn't right. take it right. and move it. Right. I mean. I mean, the whole thing is, it just doesn't make sense. That's all there is to it. I agree. It's not random. There's nothing random about it. I agree that it makes absolutely no sense. But I know I had nothing to do with it. I know I don't know anybody that would do that. I wouldn't even want to know somebody who would be capable of that. And I don't know what else to tell you. Your actions don't make sense, Amy. What do you mean? It doesn't make sense that you would not be questioning your mother about this sudden trip for an 80 year woman to take with such a sort suspicious communication I to you. It just doesn't make sense to me. I'm not a person who questions <laughs> Okay, but that's not, that's not normal. For me, it is. My sister is different. My mother is different. My dad is different. I'm, for me, it's normal. And I've always been that way. So if you want to say it's not normal, okay, fine. But for me, it's normal. I'm just telling you what it, look, it's just one of those. For me, it's normal. It's just another... It's another red flag. I mean, it's just weird. To me, it's not. To me, it's normal. It's not a red flag to me. It's just how I always am. 
you know, somebody says, well, why did they do this? I don't know. Did you <coughs> ask? No. Why not? I just didn't ask. That, that's me. But to me, that's normal. That's how I've always been. So for me, it's not a red flag. It's just, it's just me. It's my personality. I, I, I don't know how else to explain it. Well, it's really might as well not be because it doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. And I think that would be most people, that it wouldn't make sense to them. That's fine now. All right. I'll be back. assisting out with the, with the case with your mother and stuff. Uh, most of the time I've been at the house, my um, family's house, you know, back and forth, that's where, I, where I've been. Um, so I haven't really got to sit down to talk to you and meet you. Huh? My house? Yes, that's where I've been. Um, so... In my know, sister's house? Your sister's house? No, I haven't been over there. Oh, you took my family's house? You're talking about me, my mom, and yeah. me, my, my, my mom. Yeah, yeah. A third detective is sent in, and he seems more similar to the first. Day, sensing he might not be as aggressive as the second detective, starts to cry to elicit sympathy. Um, I know that um, he has been talking to you for a while stuff, you know? I just want to kind of... I'm sorry. I said, I'm just been talking to you and stuff. I just want to kind of get the perspective, kind of, I know you're here and, and a lot of questions have been going on, you know. Um, not that, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, since I haven't been here and spoken to you yet. Um, the, of course, there's reasons why we talk to people. We understand that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a reason why you're here, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, there are certain things that, that we do as detectives, I mean, we've done this for years, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, I, I don't know what you do, what do you do for a living? What, okay. What's your profession? I'm a paralegal. A paralegal, okay. You feel so are pretty good at being, at doing that job? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and as you are with that, that's how we are with this. I know. You understand that? I know y'all are very good. So, and this is the reasons why, why, of course, the reason why you're here, because you're not just here for coincidence, you understand that? I understand. Okay, and um, just knowing, I mean, I've been doing all just that been all day and stuff at your house. And um, the last couple of days, actually, and um, I've had listening to some interviews and talked to other people also. And um, I gotta tell you that, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, it, things just don't look good for you, you understand? The way things are all mixed up and and how stories are changing, you know? And I want to, to be honest, it doesn't, okay? That's, that's why, you know, that's why you're here. Um, the same reason why we're here, this is what we do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but all I gotta say is that life, in general, is hard, all right? It's not easy for anybody, it's not easy for us. It's not easy for on this side, it's not easy for you. Okay, we are, we're, we're all human, right? And as human beings, we are created to make mistakes. This is what we do, all right? I'm not perfect. I can sit here and look at you and tell me that I'm an angel, okay? 
Um, we've all made mistakes and done stuff that doesn't make us bad. It does not make us bad people. It doesn't. You know? Sometimes we do stupid things that come to bite us in the butt, you know? And but that's part of being human, it's part of nature. It's part of us learning, it's part of us growing, it's part of us surviving as a species, it's just what we do. Um, I didn't kill my mother. Well, I'm not, I'm not going there, okay? I'm not going there. But all I'm telling you is that you're here for a reason and it doesn't look good, okay? So far, from what we've done, it doesn't look good at all. All right? It doesn't. So, what we're trying to get to is if there's something, anything, any person that you know that that is going to lead you to, to try to get you out of the situation you're in, it's going to be very, very, it's a very good idea to tell it. And, and I'm not BSing you. You understand? Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Okay? I have, I don't have to come in here and talk to you. I know. You know, I, I'm on my own. No one sent me in here. I know. Okay? This is me just, because I've been gone. I've, I've been at the house. You know, I've been there. I was, I was there. Okay? This whole time. I... I was there. I, I, I don't, I, I don't know anybody and I, I don't I don't know what to do in order to prove that I didn't do anything wrong is my problem. I understand. I'm right in my brain. No, I got you. And I'm I'm trying to figure out what I can do to prove that I'm I didn't do anything wrong and that you know, give y'all something that would prove to you without a doubt that it, it's not me. I haven't done anything wrong. Day repeatedly avoids eye contact. She looks off to the side, and whenever she faces someone head on, she closes her eyes. For anyone versed in body language, this is a flashing neon sign that someone is lying. And I haven't, I can't, I haven't been able to think of anything. Let me ask you, do you miss your mother? Gosh, yes. My mother was my life. She was my best friend. There wasn't anything I wouldn't do for my mother. I would never hurt her. Never. If someone had a gun to my head, they would have to shoot me before I hurt my mother. Period. And I'm not BSing you. Honest to God. There isn't anything my mother wouldn't do for me. She stood by me when a lot of people wouldn't. And there is nothing I wouldn't have done for her. And I wish like hell that I would have stayed home Saturday. Because then maybe the mother's been And I would still have my mother. A huge piece of me is now dead. That movie was more important to me than any member of my family. Now, as strong as you feel, I mean, you want to get to the bottom of what's going on just as much as we do. Yes, and that's why I've been trying to rack my brain, trying to figure out how. I don't know what I can do to prove that I didn't do anything or know anybody did, did anything or I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know, but I want to get to the bottom of it. I want to be able to tell you guys something. Yeah. And I don't know what. I don't, I, I, I don't know what I can tell you that's going to help. I honestly don't. I've been trying. I know I screwed up when I didn't tell them the truth last night and correcting it. I know that threw a red flag up, I, and, and I, I understand that. And me not asking my mother questions 
they said that there's a red flag up, but it's just my personality. I'm, I'm not that person. If somebody tells me something, I go, okay, I don't ask them 500 questions. That's just not me. I never have been that way. Yeah. It, to me, it's not a red flag. It's just my personality. Yeah, so but why, why wouldn't you want to tell the truth, though? I mean, that kind of... It's, it's just, it sounds fake. I know. It sounds fake. I was, I, I was afraid that it would, that I would sound selfish that I was putting myself first before my mother. And I wasn't, being, but it's because I wasn't worried that, that something was wrong. Mm -hmm. But then after all of it happened, I thought I would sound selfish and I knew my sister would go ballistic on me. And, and so I didn't. I mean, I know that's stupid. I know it is. It's naive. It's immature. And I regret doing it. I wish I would have just said, this is what I did. And, you know, if my sister wanted to go ballistic on me, oh well, I'll be done with it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. And I know I can't, I can say I'm just sorry 500 times. But it's not going to change. It's not going to change anything. So. Did anybody else ever go to the house over there with you and hang out, or did she know? You mean? It's your mom's house. Did I ever invite anybody over? Yeah. No. Yeah. My mom was like She didn't like anybody being over there? So she didn't know anybody else? Well, I mean, Marie would come over, Grace across the street would come over, um, uh, the show of witnesses would come over. Any of your friends? No. No? Did you have any friends in the area? No. No? No. There's no one you talk to in the area? No? No. Day alternates between righteous indignation and distraught daughter. The act is wearing thin, and it is unlikely that this detective is going to believe her any more than the other two do. Socialize with anybody in this area. I just want, like, if you're going out of town, I was just wondering if someone knew that you were going to be out of town and stuff. No. Other than my mother, no. I'm not antisocial. I just, I don't like people knowing my business, and I, most of the people that I knew when I was growing up and stuff like that have moved. Hmm. I don't drink, so I don't go out. Um, and I don't, you know, just go to restaurants just to hang out, you know, that type of thing. I hang out with my mom. She's my best friend. So. What about your father? I talked to my dad. Um, him and I are close. And, um, that's where I stayed last, well, from four until I came here. Um, but then his wife, Katie, um, who I love to death. And, um, but other than that, no. You get along with your father? Yeah. When was the last time you saw him? When they came in. Pick me, they picked me up from my dad's really house. Yeah. Did you see your father all the time too? Or no? Well, when I was 12 or 13, my parents got divorced, so okay. um, I, I would see him on and off, but um, I mean, I didn't. It wasn't that we, I mean, we were, there was a period when we didn't speak, yeah. but that was when I was a teenager and rebellion and mm -hmm. stupid. But, um, then, um, 
our relationship just got better and we grew closer. Uh-huh. And, you know, I wasn't as close to him as I was to my mother. But I only moved back in with my mother five years ago whenever I went to my divorce. Uh-huh. So, you know, um, but I value my dad's opinion and his advice being very blunt and so is Katie and I appreciate that and so normally I will call and ask them their advice or their you know opinion on mm-hmm. something because I know they're going to tell me what I need to hear not what I want to hear so was the last time you shot a gun um shot Carrie's gun probably eight months ago. Carrie? Carrie's a friend? Mm-hmm. You guys boyfriend, girlfriend? Like together? Yeah. You know him for a long time? Thirty years. That's how it feels. What kind of gun does he have? He has a fifty caliber. Fifty caliber. Mm-hmm. He collects them. Oh. But he keeps the locked up in a safe. Oh. So that's when you shot a gun was eight months ago? Mm-hmm. Do you know how long gunshot residue stays in her hand? Yeah. Do you only really get swapped for gunshot residue on your hands? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, you know, do you have any guns in the house or weapons in the house, you know? Um, I'm told my mother had a gun. Well, you don't know if she had it or not? I knew she had one a long time ago that I hid. Um, and then she got another one, but apparently that one went missing, and I don't think she ever reported it. Okay. You hid the first one? Mm-hmm. Why'd you hide it for? Because I didn't think it was safe. Hmm. You know what kind of gun she had? Um, the one I hid, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was like a 38. Okay. It wasn't once she replaced it with, you know? It was bigger. Okay. I don't know how, I, it, the, the barrel was longer. I, I don't know exactly what it was. Okay. When, so, when you hit it, where'd you hide it at? The 38? Mm-hmm. In, in the garage, um, in one of the bins. One of the bins? Mm-hmm. Is it still there? As far as I know, yes. Okay. Although she should be easy now that she is being asked about guns, and when she is handed one, Day bluffs her way along, somehow thinking she will be able to outsmart them somehow. Um, and what about the bigger gun? You haven't seen that in how long? Have you seen it? Or? She's the one who told me that one was missing. Okay. I don't know where she kept it. Um. She just told me that she had a gun, it, it was missing. And that was a couple of months ago. Now she, did she like guns? Was she a gun fanatic? Or, why did she have a gun for? Why do you think her mom had a gun? I thought it was for protection. Yeah. But, um, barrel on that thing didn't look like it was for protection. Yeah. I mean, it was awful long barrel to me. Yeah. Um, but my mom didn't go to the range or anything like that. I mean, she wasn't somebody who went out firing weapons or anything like that. Yeah. So it's possible it was for protection and it was just what she could buy. Did she know how to use a weapon? Did she know how to use it? She used to be auxiliary for Sid Cloud in the 70s. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. So does she like revolvers, you think? Were there revolvers she liked? Yeah. Yes, yeah, she could always out shoot my dad with a shotgun. Oh, really? He hated that. <laughs> How, um, if your mom was to work to hide a gun, what do you think she would hide that? Um, she would have hid it somewhere in her bedroom. Okay. She would have kept it somewhere in her bedroom, somewhere that she could have gotten her hands on it. How long did you think that she, she, got, she was missing? She told me two months ago that it was missing. Two months ago, huh? I told her she needed to call and report it. Who was living with her two months ago? I was. You were? 
Now, does she ever have anybody over that she think would take it? If she did, she never told me. Hmm. But that wouldn't be unusual. If, if she didn't have, my mother was that person, if she wasn't completely positive, yeah. she wouldn't make an accusation. Oh, okay. Yes, that seems pretty nice. My mother was a wonderful Christian woman. That sounds a lot like my mom. Um, that, that gun, if you had to guess what size caliber, what, how big it was, what do you think? Um, I know it was um, a revolver mm -hmm. and um, barrel. It's pretty long. About that, like that, about that long? Yeah. So I don't know exactly what caliber it was. You, the best I can do is I can tell you what a 9mm looks like. Yeah. And that's only because I see them on television all the time. Yeah. And I know what a 38 looks like. Yeah. Was it bigger than, than a 38? It was bigger than a 38. And what color was it? Was it chrome, silver, black? It had a black handle and it was um, chrome. It was all chrome? Yeah. The, the long head. Yeah, because it was the one I hit was chrome with brown. Okay. But um, it was just a little little thing. Okay. This one had a, the, a black candle. I remember that. And a couple of months ago she told me that she came in she said, Amy, um, my gun is missing and I just looked at her. And I said, your gun is missing? She said, yeah, the, well, the long one. And I went, okay, what do you mean it's missing? And she said, it's missing. And I said, did you call the sheriff department? Mm -hmm. And she said, no. I said, Mom, if it's missing and it gets used, it comes back to you. Uh -huh. And she just kind of walked away. And she never called? Mm, not that I'm aware of. I, I had two thoughts. One, she got it from somebody and it wasn't registered to her. Uh -huh. Two, um, she did call and just came tell me. Mm -hmm. I mean, those were my two thoughts. She either didn't call or she did call. If she didn't call, it was because it wasn't registered to her. Did she ever own any of her own weapons? I believe that 38 was registered to her. Not to you? No, to me? Yeah. No. no. The timing of the gun allegedly going missing is suspicious and the person with the most access to the weapon is Day herself. Her entire story is a series of red flags. I grew up around guns. I don't need to have one. Did you ever do any hunting and stuff? I don't hunt. Oh, you don't hunt? Okay. I don't believe in killing animals. Except for snakes. That's all right. They're reptiles. Yeah, that's right. Well, you had one stare you right at you, and your the tongue almost touch you, and you already are afraid of them. Your fear factor goes up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, killing them doesn't seem like such a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But anything else, I will hurt you if you hit an animal or you know, you know that type of. I'm 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 very big about animal rights. Yes. Yeah. Human rights, animal rights, I mean, I'm just, that's just, the, you don't hit a woman, a woman doesn't hit a man, you don't hit an animal, you don't mistreat, you don't try to mistreat children, I mean, that's, that's how I was raised, that's how I am. And that's the reason I'm trying, been trying to find out and figure out what or how I can give y'all something to prove that, to stop you, where you don't have to, you stop looking at me, and maybe, you know, move on to somebody else or a different direction. And I don't know, I can't think of what I can do. What, what, I was in here, so I don't know what the other detectives talked to you about. What did they tell you about your mother? They told me that um, she was buried in the backyard 
with um, fresh dirt over her and fake flowers. And she was rash wrapped in trash bags. Did you tell you anything else she was wrapped in? And all I thought about was after my sister left Sunday about I guess a little twelve thirty or a little after I stepped out on the back porch and took a cigarette. And I never knew she was there. When was that Sunday? Mm -hmm. I was standing there smoking a cigarette. And I never knew she was in the backyard. All by herself. Did you never notice those flower beds? Um, which one? There's one that she plants the tomatoes in, and then there's the other one that she has the aloe plants, and she had fake plants there, but she had those there all year long. Oh, she put fake plants there? Mm -hmm. She always put fake plants there? Mm -hmm. Why does she do fake plants for? Because of the um, air vent from the um, dryer. Mm -hmm. It's, um, she has to keep it covered because it doesn't have a cover on it. Mm -hmm. And it killed the plants anytime she's planted them there. So she just, about three years ago, started putting fake plants there so that way she didn't have to worry about it. And on the other side is the, it, it's a smaller one, but it's, um, uh, that's where she normally paints the um, peppers and the tomato plants, but there's nothing planted there. Hmm. there it's, it, it, it's an empty one right now. So when they said the fake plants, I, there's only one place in the backyard that there's fake plants. Did you ever help her plant the fake plants? I've helped her move her and, you know, and rearrange them and you know, pick different ones to put there, but uh -huh. that's about it. You ever help her dig and shovel and plant new ones? I mean, I helped her with the shovel. Day claims that she helped her mother place fake flowers in the garden. As the second detective would say, this just doesn't sound logical. Some people may put fake plants in a container, but not in the ground. And definitely not flowers that coincidentally get placed over a buried body. They kill, kill snakes. Um, but, um, and then, you know, just kind of rearrange the dirt with the shovel and just put new plant, new, you know, rearrange the flowers or change them. And I would stand back and look at them or she would stand back and look at them. But we haven't done that in uh, September. Um, the last time we did it was in um, July. In July. John? How long have you been at that house for? Uh, I moved back in five years ago. Wait, five years? You've been there five years? That's a long time. Yeah. That's a long time. That's how long we've been divorced. Oh. I was supposed to get, I was supposed to be moving to Ohio, but. Oh. Um, would there be any reason whatsoever that your DNA would be on the plastic bags? Depends um, if they were big black ones. They're in the garage. I touched them. Okay. 
What about anything else? I mean, there's the most of the things out in the garage. Me and Mom both touch. Like we what? Move, we move it around. Um, blankets, um, cable, rope, um, bins, uh -huh. um, the televisions, the Tupperware. Everything. Uh, coolers, uh, suitcases. I mean, yeah, we we because we shift and move things all around. We both do it. Yeah. So I mean, her and I DNA. Um, Judy and Morgan's are probably it, it there too. So because we're always shifting things around and moving the stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I get a suitcase down for her, or she'll get a suitcase down for me, or um, you know getting a trash bag or grab a roll of the trash bags and you know mm -hmm. and then if we don't need them just stuff them back in the box um gotcha. just I mean, you know stuff like that um where where what what kind of cable are you talking about you mentioned cable you move cables around also um over on the um Shelves. Mm -hmm. There are um, we got jars of different things, and we were switching cables to the TVs, mm -hmm. and um, we took one of the. I took the white cable yeah. off of her TV because it was too long, mm -hmm. and she doesn't like a lot of the wires. Oh yeah. And so we put a new one on it, and I took it and put it out in the garage. Mm -hmm. um, but she. It helped me, you know, to put it together. Mm -hmm. um, and I just put it up on the, let's see, it would be the one, two, the second shelf mm -hmm. uh, by the garage door kind of in, or maybe it was the third shelf. Because mm -hmm. um, there's a little black cable one that's on the shelf also, but okay. I don't know if it's the second or third one, but it's closest to the garage door. I remember that part. Um, so. Um, that's that's the cable I was talking about. What sheet? What about sheets? He said sheets. What kind of sheets do you move around in the garage? Blankets. The blankets we use to wrap the oh, blankets. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do we have blankets? Certain blankets that we use to wrap the pump during the winter time. The pump. Yeah, it's outside and it's kind of got a, uh, it's got a block house around it. Yeah. Um, and we use um. All of the items Day is describing are used in the removal of a body. It is almost painfully obvious that she has specified those things. Yet, oddly enough, this is where her story is the most plausible. She lives in the house with an elderly woman. So it would be natural for her to be the one to move things in the garage. Two blankets and light that we put in there okay. to keep it from the water from freezing, you know, the pipes from freezing. Oh, is that the well? Is mm -hmm. that well or something? Yeah. But it's got, a, it's over off to the, it's not next to the house, it's off to the side. It's got its own little okay. house around it. Now, these blankets, they keep them in the garage all the time, is that what you do? Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of blankets are they? Uh, one is a kind of like a, a well, I call it a, a, a scratchy pink with a kind of like a satin, um, you know, around mm -hmm. it. It's got paint all over it. Mm -hmm. um, another one is, was mine when I was really young. It's mm -hmm pink with um, a little a character, two characters or mm -hmm. something like that on it and it's got uh, the lamp actually almost cut it on fire one year. Mm -hmm. um, we got it too close mm -hmm. um, and that's out in the garage. That's in the garage. Mm -hmm. What color is that one? Uh, one you know, side but... it's just solid pink, uh -huh. like a light pink, uh -huh. and on the other side, it's pink that has uh, little pictures. Uh, I think there's like green on it or something. Uh -huh. I'm not. I'm not exact. I haven't really. I, I saw it the other day. I gotcha. So when I went when I went out, I went out there to get something, and I saw it the other day, and I had to move it. So there's no reason I don't remember. And that's how I remember seeing that other pink one because it's kind of like it's like right below it. Uh -huh. So. So I mean, they're like, we keep them kind of stacked together, but 
And when will you, when when where when would you have moved rope around? When I was doing moving the cable. Oh, okay. Yeah, we keep them all in the same area. Okay. And um, you guys got like a lot of twine or stuff like that, or you have any twine or anything like that? Mm, you mean like the really thin, thin, thin? Yeah. Um, no, I don't. Uh, well, no, yeah, there is some on the shelf. Yeah, there's some. I think there's some on the shelf. I think it's twine. I haven't really paid that much attention to it. But I think there's some twine out there. Is like fishing line? Uh, it could be fishing line or it could be um, uh, weed eater line. Oh, yeah, I gotcha. So, I mean, I don't know which one, but it could be one of the two. Okay. So, I, I, I don't know. But as for skinny twine, do you ever remember seeing any twine anywhere? Um, Really skinny twine. Yeah. Um, I think there is some out there, but the only thing that I really remember seeing is like a frayed um, brown, kind of like a scratchy rope. Okay. And I only remember that is because she had me, we had that, we use it to wrap the, um, when we do the pump, we take and tie that around there to keep it in place uh -huh. and then set the light down there. Okay. That's what we use for that. I gotcha. But it's really scratchy. Oh. Um, one of the garage, that 38, if it's still there, is it still be on the shelf somewhere? I'm trying to imagine. It's okay. No, it's not on the shelf. It's in a bin. Mm -hmm. um, it's in one of the bins. Um, on the, it's not on the shelf. It's mm -hmm. on the on the floor. Um, and unless she moved it around, mm -hmm. um, I think it's like in the, first or second bin, I think, I'm not exactly sure. I know it's in one of those bins out there. If I, more correctly. Yeah, I mean, if I went out there, I could, I mean, I would know exactly which one it was. That's definitely, you moved that one. You moved that gun, right? You're the one who hit that gun? I hit that gun. Okay. And I did that um, back before I moved out and um, a long time ago, uh, back when, um, um, back in 98. Oh, so it's been there for a long time. Yeah. So if we did a test on that one the last time it was fired, it would be a long time ago. Should be. Should be. Unless mom found it. You think she possibly could have shot it and put it back in the same spot? Mm, no. Probably not. Day is careful enough to only say that the gun shouldn't have been fired. By not giving him a firm answer, she is leaving herself room to change her story later. Clues your mom ever bring it up and say, Hey, I might like maybe she got rid of it or gave it to somebody to share it to anything like that. All she told me was that she came in, she said, We're in trouble, the gun's missing. I told her she needed to call the sheriff department. Mm -hmm. She just kind of looked at me and walked off. She never said whether she did or not, and I, I didn't ask. Again, it's not my person. Yeah. I mean, I did make the comment, you know, if something happens, it's going to go back to you, mom. Yeah. So, whether she did or not, I didn't ask because it, it meant that if she didn't, I knew that it was a gun that wasn't registered to her. Mm -hmm. And if she did, then you guys would mount the house. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I didn't ask her. That way she didn't have to tell me. That's just how I am. I said we, I said we swabbed your, arm, your hand. Mm -hmm. We did find residue on it. Was there any particular reason why you did have residue on your hand for? No. No? No. Okay. I said this. I know, but no. No, okay. Um, and your room is the far room, right? The far? Is it the one all the way down, right? 
On the left? Um, if you go in, it's the one towards, it's in the front house, purple. Okay. Yeah. And the other room that's there is on the right? That's her TV room. That's her TV room. So mm -hmm. she hangs out, that's, does she hang out in there ever? Is that where she likes to sit and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does she like watching shows and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. Like, who saw like a lot of notes and she was taking, like, I know she took notes for everything. She well, likes uh, Dr. Charles Stanley, so she takes a lot of notes on the, um, his sermons, and mm -hmm. she has another one that she likes to watch, and um, she loves Paula Dean mm -hmm. at the cooking shows, yeah. so she takes a lot of notes on those mm -hmm. things, yeah. So. So if you think someone... Oh, NCIS. NCIS, yeah. NCIS, NCIS Los Angeles, and NCIS New Orleans. Yeah. And that. Hawaii Five-O. Really? Loves Steve. No, I can't back. She loves Dave Lee. No, I, no, no, I'm sorry. Just recently we had this conversation. I love Steve McGarrett. She likes Chin Ho. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not funny, but yeah. <sighs> it's amazing the conversation I just remembered. Yeah. Anyways, go ahead. All right, I gotta get back because I'm thinking about Hawaii Five-O right now. <laughs> um, you don't have DVR? <laughs> no, I don't actually. Um, yeah, so she took a lot of notes. Um, she's like real organized with a lot of stuff too. I noticed. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very organized. Yeah, very very organized. Mm -hmm. And um, did you always get along with your mom, or did you ever have times when you had problems? No. You always got along with her. Mm -hmm. um, the worst thing I always, and, and I did it twice, and, and to this day, if I had a time machine, I would go back and change it. I disappointed her twice, and I wish that's the last person in the world that I would ever want to disappoint. I don't know what those disappointments. My ex-husband. Mm -hmm. She told me not to marry him, and I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in 2010, I had a substance abuse problem. Okay. But she was the one who helped me and got me through it. And I was very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. But I still wish I could go back and never have that problem. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get into your whole substance abuse stuff because I don't want to bring up bad memories if I don't have to. But did the other detectives talk to you about a substance abuse problem at all? They asked me if I had a substance abuse problem, and I told them back in 2010. Yeah. They asked me if I still had one, and I told them no. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't even drink alcohol. Yeah. It's hard, though. It's hard. It's hard fighting, fighting the urge when you have a problem, though, you know? And not only that, it's hard to admit having a problem, you know? It's for me. And it's not against this. No, for me, it wasn't. It, as a matter of fact, um, any time I can help somebody, yeah. I, I have absolutely no problem talking about it. I understand. Day admits to relationship and substance abuse problems in her past, but she glosses over their seriousness and how they impacted her relationship with her family, including her mother. But you know, it's not against the law to have a substance abuse program. I know. Or, or a problem. And we also, I do have a misdemeanor because of it. <laughs> but we also, we also, <laughs> we do also offer programs and stuff, you know, for that. Right. That and and they're actually they've been proved and they've got pretty decent ones. So if there's any reason you're worried about telling us about one, you know, we no, can do whatever we can. No, absolutely not. Um, okay. I I mean I know mine was um, the Larica, and um, I don't even I, know what that is. It's uh, for um, it's FDA approved. It's for fibromyalgia and um, convulsions yeah. and epilepsy, and. Um, the doctor that I was going to at the time had me taking three times the amount milligrams that yeah. the pharmaceutical company recommended. Mm -hmm. And this reason the judge I had doc, I had Judge O'Brien. Okay. Um, I spent 22 days in jail, got my bail hearing, and then I spent almost a, a year on house arrest. And Judge O'Brien had had enough with the prosecution because they kept changing prosecutors. Mm -hmm. So when my court case came up, she told him to make a deal dropped it down to the DUI and um, gave me 100 hours of community service, which I did at the Pound. Um, I had to go to um, victims awareness class and a DUI class. 
which was kind of funny because everybody in there, they when they would ask what their blood alcohol was, they would tell them in yeah zero. Yeah. There was another guy in there for pot and zero. Yeah. Um, of course, the one guy that came in and ate that little stick that you have to put on your tongue and it turns green. You've been drinking. When he breathed on it and it turned greener than the Incredible Hulk, without it even touching his tongue, mm -hmm. at eight o'clock in the morning, um, we when he left, we all just kind of went. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? But you know, he the guy up there, he was great. Um, I learned a lot. As a matter of fact, my mom ended up getting irritated because when she would leave, when she'd leave and drive, I would be, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to. Do that. But it changed my driving habits. Yeah. So in the long run, I mean, I benefited greatly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wish I would have never had the problem, but in the long run, I did. I benefited greatly because I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about others, and I learned a lot about what could happen. Oh, yeah. So um, the new doctor I have, mm -hmm. I love her um, because she is a um, diet, exercise, the vitamins person, mm -hmm. um, the prescription, which is this one is for my heart, and this one is for my blood pressure. Yeah. Um, so you know it's. I but might need some of those. Let me see. Let the me blood me. pressure. <laughs> Right, well, this is only five. I take it twice a day, but it's five milligrams. Uh, you re or no, once a day. This one's oh. twice a day. This is actually. What time is it, by the way? I don't know. I don't have a watch on me. I don't have I don't, phones on. Okay. Well, you gotta take one soon. At, at six thirty, I have to take. Okay. Um, but anyways, um, it's um, it. This is the last resort, and when she comes in, it, like uh, this one, she came in with. Um, Three, this one plus three other type of heart medications, okay. paperwork to go over it with you. What that's is, good. What, so that's different, right? She exactly. So, on, so. And once the two of y'all agree, mm -hmm. then she'll write the prescription. And fortunately, um, I was at 157 whenever I started having to take this. Mm -hmm. This I'll always I've had to take since I was well, not this one mm -hmm. per se, but um, I've always had heart conditions since mm -hmm. I was about 15. Um, but this one, I'm excited to say because I was 157 once I started going through my divorce yeah. and um, I am able to drop that weight and I've got it down to a point to where my blood pressure is um, she is looking at taking me off of this okay. and also my cholesterol medication so that'll be two less ones I have to take and I'm very excited about that all because I lost, and, and I lost weight yeah. so you know no, do, do, no I ask you this to the Medications you take ever affect or alter your, the way you think and your mind thoughts? Yeah. Do you ever get extremely angry? Is that why you have blood, with your blood pressure and everything? Oh, no. Uh, my blood pressure was because of my weight. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so never... Um, um, this, you could... Uh, Nano Spring would do no. more. All this does is keep my heart at between 60 and 70. Okay. Now when you're on your... When you got addicted to... What's the name of it? Lerica. Larican, what kind of what kind of medication? What is that? Is it a, is it opiate or is it a? Oh. It is a, a controlled substance, and it's for like epilepsy. No, it's for ep it, it's uh, it, for epilepsy. It's nerve. Oh, okay, so like but relax. it can alter your your mind size. Oh, you can. It so can, how, it how, can. So how would it affect you? Do you think when you, whenever you're on it? When I was taking it, I don't take it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Um, I take gabapentin. Yeah. And gabapentin is like taking a nap. Yeah. Um, but. Um, Day gives unnecessary details and goes off on tangents. This not only buys her time until the next uncomfortable question, but it also gives her an opportunity to gauge how the detective feels about her. Working against her is the fact that the detective is also using this time to read her body language to see how she reacts when telling the truth and when she is lying. And the Larica, if you, I was taking it four times a day, of course I was taking 800 milligrams yeah. four times a day, which is way too much. Um, it, um, you got a extremely nice high. And yeah. if you took more than four, you could be in la la land and not even care. Yeah. It'd be like drinking 24 beers. Yeah. And 
you could take eight of those and feel like that. Yeah. Um, I could take 12 of them and walk normal. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you ever lose a memory or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. It was, I, I wrecked a car. Oh. Fortunately, nobody, it was just me and the car. But, um, yeah, it was, it was because I was driving and it will, yeah, I just, I fell asleep. Oh. You, I mean, you, it, it does that. Um, when I went to, start going to this new doctor, um, she looked at everything and she, she was the one who told me a lot about the, the I was taking way too much and told me I could put me on gabapentin but it, because of the withdrawals she started me off at 600 milligrams and then I asked her if I could go down to 400 milligrams mm -hmm. and then we went down to 300 milligrams and then I um, asked if I could go down to two and two didn't work so we've remained at three okay. and it's been great that's good so um, you know and my mother was a huge part of that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to go back to it mm -hmm. because of what's happened. Mm -hmm. Because that would dishonor her. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for my mother. I would have been dead five, six years ago if it hadn't been for my mother. So, there is no way I would go back to something like that because that would just completely dishonor her. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not. I would never do anything to dishonor my mother. Well, how are you with drinks? Do you want some water or something? I um, do need a water because at 6.30 yes. I'm supposed to It might be around 6.30 now, so you might have to take some of those. I have to take them, this one, at 6 o'clock. Okay. Let me get you some water, okay? Thank Hold you. tight. Uh, it's really cold. I don't think I've cracked all my water up. What's that? <laughs> I said I've cried so much. I don't think I've more water left. Amy, question real quick. Again, try to answer this question for me. How do you, how do you make your, your income? Um, I do as needed paralegal. That's needed per paralegal, okay. Mm -hmm. And how does that work? If they need me, they call me. Are you like in some kind of agency that they got your contact number, or do you reach out to companies, or how does that work? Uh, Hanson and Associates, they call me if they've got somebody here and they say, are you available? And if I say yes, then they say, can you go meet this person? But it's Do they pay you by the hour? Do they pay you by salary? Do they pay no, they, you by, they pay by me, job, by day? How, how do they do it? They pay me by hour, and uh, however long it takes to do the job. Okay. So you're approximately like how much you make on a monthly basis, approximately? If I only have steady, if I only have one client, um, depending on how long it takes, I can make anywhere from nine hundred to um, fifteen hundred dollars. That's why then on a job or the whole month? For the month. For the month? Mm -hmm. So how long how long you been doing this? This prior legal stuff like that I'm working for? About a year. About a year. A little over a year. So they said on a yearly basis, like how much you made how much your annual income last year? Um, last year would have been um, It's approximately like a, a ballpark. Eighteen, nineteen thousand. Eighteen, nineteen thousand? Mm -hmm. And they pay you uh, on the table, they pay you by check, the dog taxes, how, how, how does that work? They sometimes, they use, send me um, a, che a check, but they don't, I mean, I'm not, gotcha. I okay. wasn't considered an employee, so they didn't take taxes out. Gotcha, okay. Um, yeah. You know, so. All right, no problem. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. After a few questions about her income, Day is left alone. Eerily, she is wrapped in a pink blanket, much like the one in which she buried her mother. Amy Day was found guilty of the first degree murder of Ora Lee Hawkins. She was sentenced to life in prison. Even after all of the evidence placed against her and the results of her trial, Day still maintains that she is innocent. 
Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like the video. And if you want to support the channel even more, there's a Patreon link in the description below. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.